Hey guys, welcome to episode 30 of Been There Done Matt. We are joined by Matt himself. Um, and yeah, obviously myself, Michaela Bowen as well. Can't wait to get to it. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> the first one introduced podcast, first guest introduced podcast on it. the show. It's got to be different. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today and, um, yeah, everything that you've been doing, I've followed you on social media for a while and, um, yeah, well, so. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on board. I've um, <laughs> obviously followed you yourself as well, Matt, for a fair while. Yeah, and thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've wanted to come on for a bit because I think you're just talking to some incredible athletes and not even just athletes, just incredible people. And it's mm. really inspiring to listening, uh, to listen, sorry, to their stories and, um, you know, obviously just share a bit of um, share a bit of common ground with those guys and hear hear all their stories and stuff as mm. well. It's really been cool. So. It's interesting you said that um, athletes and then you said like, people as well because that's what the, probably the biggest thing I've taken away from even just working in sport myself is that and even growing up like being so in awe of all these athletes and then working in the industry of sport itself and then just realising they're just people and yeah, you hear yourself and then like, you know, you watch it on TV and you only really get to see that they, they, they the media builds them up to be less like, just robotic, superhuman a bit figure, robotic like, yeah, yeah, superhuman figure, and that this, yeah. yeah, and they're robotic, and then I want to re- probably one of the reasons why they seem a bit when it gets to that, yeah, exactly what you're saying. When it gets to that point, it kind of feels like, they, you know, there's a bit of a hard to reach kind of moment mm. because it portrays it in a way that they're so unreachable and everything's perfect yeah. in their life. So yeah. it's personally what I find really interesting is just um, going through it myself, and even all the Eagles girls is just how how raw it, it all is when you actually talk to players as people and yeah. not just athletes. Yeah, for sure, because that's when I. One of probably one of the biggest things when I first started working in senior footy back in Adelaide and like you had a couple of guys would come down from AFL to play at the team and you'd be like, oh my God, like, you yeah. know, I'm following up the Crows or, yeah. you know, you probably played in wherever they played in Melbourne or whatever. And you're like, oh, and then there's, once you get to know them after people, a couple of weeks yeah. and just like chill dudes and, and half they just the time talk shit. And beautiful people. Yeah. And like they will forget their boots just as many times as all the other players will. So like, you know, it's it's incredible to find yeah, that stuff right. out. Yeah. And this is actually the first time, or the second time actually been, he actually came to drop off some goodies from your own brand. Tell us a little bit about what yeah. you do. Yeah, so I, um, I've i got my own, um, I've just started my own brand up this year um, called Boxes um, or Boxes by Bowen if you want to get it a bit more official. But um, yeah, so it's pretty much, I guess, just a um, brand I started up um, based around mental health and mm-hmm. wanting to raise awareness for um you know, for not even the young ones growing up, but just for everyone that, um, you know, has a bit of a point to prove, I guess. And, um, yeah, just like we were talking about just then, I think for me, um, yeah, the last year or so has probably been one of the most challenging for, for myself personally. And that's probably why, um, I guess it's, I've, I've kickstarted it myself. I've always been passionate about mental health and, um, wanting people just to just be true to themselves and, um, never let anyone say no. So, um, so yeah, it's exactly, I guess what we were just talking about around the fact that, um, I guess my message to the the younger people coming through is that, um, I want them to know that everyone goes through it and, um, you know, myself being an athlete, um, and so many of the girls in our team, mental health is real and, um, yeah, it's exactly what I believe we're all a part of it really. So it's just something that I wanted to start up and obviously make it, I don't want to really, um, you know, I kind of wanted to turn it a bit more to the motivating side and, um, you know, give people a bit of a, a voice to stand on. And I guess that's why I kept it so simple because boxes are so different for everyone. And that's, I guess, where I came from yeah. with the idea of it. And I guess myself, I've never, ever wanted to be put in a box. And I, I guess yeah. for me, I won't ever let anyone do that. So I wanted to make sure that, um, yeah, I guess that's the kind of message I have behind it. Yeah, that's awesome. Name that's too, that's like where the boxing. name comes yeah. from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty because you said it's a simple name, but it, like people would assume that would be I the case. To like keep boxes, it simple. yeah, yeah, because exactly. That's a, a box thought, for me yeah. is um, at the moment. You know, it could be trying to get into the squad. It could be trying to um, you know work on stuff outside of footy. Whereas yeah. a box for yourself is totally different. Mm. A box for a young girl at school could be trying to you know make friends or something. So um, yeah, I guess it's just such a broad aspect that's um, you know across so many so many um, areas of life, and I just wanted to be able to. Um, yeah, start the conversation and, mm. and continue it. So, how did you get into the clothing part? Was that did you already have a foot in the door somewhere in fashion or yeah. clothing? Well, not really. No, I, I probably I think this piece here is the first one I actually designed. Um, I have a. You can ask my mum. I think she said <laughs> she went through my wardrobe the other day and was just shocked at how many hoodies I had. Yeah, I have right. I have a huge thing for hoodies. I don't know why. It's, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what it's currently like. 30 degrees I'm wearing a hoodie it's nice and cool in here but (laughs) (laughs) almost the start of summer yeah exactly so um yeah I did I started up in winter and um started up with the hoodies which is really cool and um I was stoked to get these up and running and I guess yeah for me 
alongside having um, such a strong message, I believe, and I wanted to make sure they were good quality. And um, yeah, so I got these first piece, first pieces kind of made up, and then it all just kind of rolled on from there. Mm. I just like I wanted, like I wanted to make more, and like people were loving it, and um, you know, just kind of related to the idea, and people were actually, you know, I guess like the shirt you're wearing now, Matt, is just in the making. Like, what does that mm. even mean? Yeah, you know, but like so many people have kind of got their own personal meaning to it, and yeah, that's what yeah. means most to me, I guess. So. Um, yeah, started off with the hoodies and then ended up making some shirts. Um, got some hats, hats all lined up, just got stickers made up. Um, right. and now obviously it's summer, so I'm yeah, right. currently in the works with some singlets and some summer oh, gear, sick. which is really cool. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, just placed the order for them about a week ago. So I'll be, be waiting sick. a month or so to get those in. But how's it all going? Like, I mean, like in terms of having to manage it all yourself, like it's all, you're, you're yeah. running it all yourself, how you've kind of coped and building up from obviously the start of the year yeah well that's a, it's a really good question actually it's um i guess for me i think because I, if it was something that i just wanted to start up a clothing brand um with with nothing behind it i think i would have found it a bit more challenging but i think because yeah. um you know it'd be those nights where i'd be laying in bed and i'd be like i have i, I have you can swear. I have something right. yeah i was about to, <laughs> yeah, <wanna>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like those moments where I think for me, cause I'm so passionate about it, like I'm having these ideas, um, kind of pop up at random moments yeah. and that's why it's not like, I don't feel like I'm losing motivation with it. And, yeah, um, wow. in the same sense, I'm not like, I'm not pressuring myself to kind of obviously cause you got footy and at the moment mm. I'm working, got footy at uni as well. So just trying to balance all that. Um, and I guess this was kind of just a side little passion for me that, um, you know, it's worked in well because I can kind of, the more I put into it, the more, the more hectic it gets. So like now we're um, about to go into season, season six of the AFLW. So I'll probably pump out these, um, these singlets. And then, you know, if we, if, I think we are going into a hub. So oh, um, wow. yeah, when we do that, I'll, I'll have a bit more time to kind of play around. And, um, but yeah, so the more I kind of put into it, the, the busier it gets, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been sure. all right. If, if it's been a hectic time, um, I just tend to, chill it out a bit yeah yeah, yeah. still right. got some stock in the yeah, work yeah. so yeah nice. really good that's awesome and like the like you said before about like the like in the making and the whole like simplicity simplicity around it and you can kind of yeah make it around you can not that you can make it fit but you, it's all different to each person and what it means to them well, that's exactly like yeah, yeah that's why i got it and i was like you just said in the making it's all about well what that means to me is more like it's you're always trying to get better as you get as you get older it's always about improving yourself as a person so you go through that as like a journey it's, it's yeah well to think yeah and that's exactly like it's actually really nice to hear that from you because like yeah. i don't think i've actually sat down with someone and asked what it's meant so i think um like even for me if i was to share that on my behalf is just um like the whole idea of in the making is just the focus on the process and that's exactly mm. what it's been and especially i guess for for eagles like i never I started footy would have been five six years ago now and i just knew when i was younger i wanted to be an elite athlete that was it but I never, it wasn't like I started footy because I wanted to get somewhere. I didn't want to get to the destination. I just wanted to enjoy the process of actually getting there. So I guess that's why I wanted to enjoy the build, um, yeah. you know, of becoming who you actually are and not forcing anything and, um, yeah, trusting the process really because yeah, right. that's, I guess that's what I'm more about. So how old were you when you first started footy? Well, I'm 20 now, so Jeez. I would be, yeah, 15, 15, maybe just wow. 15, yeah. Went Were you playing to... sport before that? Yeah, yeah, so I was doing, and that's why I was just just brought up. I am um, extremely sporty in school. My whole family <laughs> are like all into ballet. I'm the first oh, really? family not to do ballet, as you can probably tell. I don't but did you like ballet like even like younger than no, they do nothing? I oh, didn't. So mum has this big kindy dance in the time. Field. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so mum's extremely coordinated. I, I would take her off the footy field though, mum personally. But um, <laughs> yeah, so she's incredibly flexible and coordinated and just very driven. So I, I you know, I give a lot of credit to her in that sense. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I mum never forced me to do ballet, which I, I really appreciate from her her point of view. She just wanted me to do what I loved, and um, yeah, so I started off. I, you know, I played basketball for a fair few years. I did cycling. I did a bit of soccer here and there. I just yeah, right, like really I love sport, yeah. um, but nothing really clicked like footy did. Um, and I guess at the time when I was fifteen, you know, and you've probably heard this line a million times that it just wasn't there for females, and mm -hmm. that's probably the best part about today um, that it actually is you know, kind of around and a bit of a pathway to access for girls. So, um, but yeah, it was just myself, Michaela Hyde, who's now at Fremantle and her sister Brie, um, Brie as well. We all just went down to Swannies. 
oh, yeah. for a day, had no plans behind it. They were just like, mate, like, do you want to head down? And I was like, I've never played footy before. Obviously, <laughs> watched my brother. I loved footy. I loved yeah. watching it. I love, always been a mad, my whole family's Frio supporters. I'm the only West Coast supporter <gasps> in my family. Always have been. So it's oh, worked wow. out really whack, but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're my family's in this hard. Yeah, exactly. Just don't it, bring it, it up. Did. Yeah, don't bring yeah. it up. No, <laughs> support the Eagles women, which is good. But um, so, yeah, no, we. I've always watched my brother kind of grow up and play footy and he's always loved it. And I guess for me, my role in that was just being there for him. And, you know, I used to cut up oranges with dad and, you know, run water for him and stuff and, and be there to support him. So Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I've always kind of been around it. But then as soon as I played it, I was like, oh. Because I cannot. What was it? Is it the phys- physicality? Was it this kind of openness, like 360, like yeah, all around? I don't know. I think it's because no one, like it was yeah. It was like in basketball, there was no physicality. It was quick and it was fast. I never enjoyed netball because I couldn't move. Yep. Like that yep. frustrated me yeah. a lot. I, think, <laughs> I can't, you could ask, yet again, ask mom, I can't sit down because, you know, this is going to be challenging to sit down here. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I just can't sit still and that's probably what it is, is that, um, yeah, I just – like I loved the fast pace of it. I loved, um, you know, the physicality of it. Like you're saying, the mental aspect. I think it was it's so challenging. Yeah. So for me, and still to this day, like I sometimes I'm on the field, I'm like, well, like I, let's just chill and just go back to the basics of it because mm. it can get, you know, ev- everyone that plays footy wild, knows it yeah. can get pretty wild and complicated. But um, yeah, I guess it's just like it's the one. I think the biggest part of it actually is probably just the culture around women's footy, especially at that time. Oh, yeah. I guess I. I played for Kalamunda Suns, um, Eastern Suns in the um, in the basketball world, and like it was, it was all fun and all fun and well, and the, the girls were lovely. But when it really got down to it, it was like I didn't feel supported. I guess I, it was just, and that's I, I, I guess a big part of um, why Mum always brings up ballet is just that um, she loved it and it was her passion. But um, it just got to a point where it was so competitive, um, you know, that the girls mm. kind of felt, um, you know, she felt. Like she couldn't really trust anyone there, and that, that I guess oh, as soon as I came to footy, it was like I it was competitive, and that's my favorite part about it. But it was like the girl next to me was competing with me to make me better, and I yeah. was trying to make her better. Mm. And so it was it was kind of like a really um, yeah. I'll always say it was just like family at Swans in that moment, and um, I guess that's why I felt nurtured there, and I felt like I I was um, I had value there, and I just. I don't know. I never, I never really questioned it. I never was like, oh, is this what I want to do? It was just, I don't want to do anything else. Yeah, I just right. want to play footy. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because it's, it's pretty. I guess that individual aspect of like ballet is that you're, you are competing for that one number one spot 100%. against. Like, it could be your teammate using that same. I guess yeah. just, if it's, they do divisions off, or something like the, that as well. The, away from ballet, you could be best friends, but in the same sense, that spot is who your best mate is competing mm. for. So um, I think that's what mum kind of worked through a fair bit and just ended up, you know, and I guess that's why she never pushed it for me because she kind of knew what it was like. Not that, um, you know, I have huge respect for all ballerinas. I think they're incredible, like so strong. Mum is so strong. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it just, I guess for me, um, having that um, culture that was just so open and and full of acceptance and just would accept anyone. Like it wasn't like you're not skinny enough so go away. It was like. You know, you're not skinny enough, so we can put you here, or we can, you know, there's there's a, there's a place for everyone. I think that's yeah. what I love. I noticed that as well. I used to work at um the East Rand of the women's side, do the S and C stuff yeah, there nice. for two years. Okay. Wow, and I was, I was going to say you're so close. Yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> walking across the road. Eh? It's yeah, dope. yeah. Uh, during the summer, I just walk. Like, yeah, walk there, that's sick. so good. Yeah. Um, sometimes I don't know. The other morning, I drove because I work with the men's as well, and I went. I go to the gym like early, like four a.m. And I so I drove there in the morning. And then uh, we had the gym session at 6 a.m. And then we walked to coffee so, over at Nine yeah. Seeds. And then I walked back home and Kay's like, where's your car? I'm like, yeah. oh, I drove like early in the morning. It's almost normal. It's a yeah. walk at 4 a.m. Yeah. So I want to get there, get in quick. Yeah. It's like, oh, then I like left it there all day. Yeah. And then I drove it back home at like 5 o'clock. No dramas, <laughs> is it? At yeah, easy parking no and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where was I going? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I worked at East Rio, the women's side. And then yeah. probably the biggest thing there was, well, biggest thing that I noticed is how much the women kind of get around each other yeah. outside of the football field, like it's yeah. not just, you know, with the guys sometimes it gets a bit regimented in the fact that they always catch up in, in groups, like they do their line meetings yeah. before trainings. They do all sorts of like little team meetings in training that don't seem to catch up a lot as like a collective outside of the yeah. group. And kind of, it's always about football with those guys. Exactly, but a lot yeah. of the, with the girls that I found it was they take and they talk about like life and stuff. They do like small things outside of 
footy and it's fun and then it's about like life and they kind of get away. Yeah. They stop being almost like they're not really teammates at that moment. They're more like friends. Exactly. And that's I think that's exactly what you just said is where the family aspect comes from is mm. because like you have so many women that are there to support you as as an individual and not just as a footy player. So it's not just like this. Um, not that I think any, you know, if it was to be that way that it's ever a bad thing, but like, um, yeah, my partner Liv is, is with Claremont at the moment and they just, they've literally just got back from a trip in Albany. Yeah. Um, and that is just like, it's just purely there for a bonding. Mm. It's not there for it to be some SAS camp or, <laughs> which I fully understand because obviously testing your resilience as a yeah. group and stuff, but, um, yeah, she just got back, you know, this morning and, and told me how much she loved it. Yeah. And she's just, she's just gone down there this year and it's just said how beautiful the girls are and, um, you know, it's a circle situation, but you could sit in any other, any one of them and they'd all, you yeah, know, yeah, want yeah. you to be there and chat to you. And, um, yeah, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's just supporting off field as much as it, mm. is, it is on field really. And then, you know, as soon as you get to game day, it's like, I know exactly how you can react to certain situations because of that. So mm. yeah, it's so, really cool. So you started out at, at Swannies, mm. Swan Districts, how or where the progression went from there? Was it just you know, do you start at youthies? Was there a youthies? Yeah, then? Rogers, Rogers Cup, Cup, yeah, yeah at the it. time. Um, so, yeah, started off, it would have been, um, yeah, I think 2015. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm acting right. like I'm 40 years old. But, yeah, so it was around 2015 um, when we went down and ended up playing, um, yeah, in the Rogers Cup, which was youth girls. I think I think, I think think it's still called Rogers Cup now maybe. I'm not um, too sure. I'm, but, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we started off there. I don't know if it was our first. I think I played two years with um, in the Rogers and Youth Girls. Yeah. Um, I don't. I think it was 2017. We won the premiership, which is cool. I co-captained with Taylor Pescud. Um, she's incredible. I think she's off with the police now, doing amazing oh, things. Sick. So, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so we won the premiership that year, which was wicked. That was, I think, my second year of playing. Um, and then, yeah, from there. Like in and amongst that, we, um, you know, there was obviously the state trials and stuff as well. So I think Mickey actually approached me in my first year to try out for under 16s. I was like, hey, like, this is state trials. Like, do you want to come down? And it was, I think it was the one moment where I was like, huh. I was like, nah, I was like, I'm all good. I've just started, like, I've just started footy. And, oh, wow, really? Um, yeah. So I actually didn't do the under 16s trials, which Mickey and Bree did. So I think, um, yeah, it wouldn't have been till I think I was I was over sixteen. It was in the following year, so the year that we um, won the premiership, twenty seventeen, I think. Um, yeah, we then tried out for state eighteen. So that was when um, you kind of go through all those trials and um, there's selections and stuff. And yeah, I ended up making it through those alongside Mickey and Bree as well, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, and then I think while I was playing state, then moved up to league from there. So I think I played. One or two years in league, maybe. Did you play in the in the grand final that against, did, against East Freya that you lost? We got the first one flogged. Mm. Yeah, I did play against that. Yeah. I was talking to was Ashley Ashley Atkins about that. Um, oh yeah, right. I forget. You. Yeah, so we were we literally went to go get a cyborg yesterday after training. Ah. She's oh my god, it's so funny. There's so many of the East girls I was so scared of when I played against them, and now half of them, Evie Gooch, Mel Caulfield, they're my teammates, and I love them. My goodness. Anyway, um, so yeah, we were down getting the cyborgs yesterday. And yeah, I was just, I always bring it up with Happy. I'm like, it's just, I, I couldn't believe it. Like all the talk was just, you know, Shawnee's are looking strong. This, and this is exactly what it is. And it's, it was probably one of the biggest learning moments in my life is that like no matter what anyone says, it's always an even playing field, always. Mm. And like credit to him, man, that like we were lost in the first first half of the first quarter, I reckon. Yeah, Like wow. just mentally, I think. Just mentally it was yeah. like, oh, and then. They just knew they were getting in our heads and like credit to them. They absolutely, absolutely smoked it. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, it definitely was a part of that. I don't, I don't forget it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, my, that was my first year there. So yeah, I was that's happy so cool. Premiership. Yeah. And then that's I think sick. you guys won the year after as well, did you? No, or was it the year before the that? year before that. Was yeah. it against Subi, I think? Yeah, I, can't, I wasn't there for that. Yeah. And that's then, when I moved over. And then you beat her. So. <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. i don't think yeah because it wasn't like i don't think because you guys were the team to beat that year i think yeah i think i think we lost one game maybe, mm. or yeah i think we lost one game so we came into it strong that's exactly what we're yeah. talking about is that even if with west coast if we won every game of the season i'd still be like and i think that's the one thing that's just like never ever underestimate where you because like for me if i put myself in east position in that which i do now like reflecting back on it i'd be like Let's go. Like, mm. let's go. You've been undefeated. Yeah, like, we'll show yeah, you. Yeah. So, 100%. It's all mental. I fully believe it's all mental. Yeah. And obviously, you know, they're extremely skilled and talented. But, yeah. 
Yeah, they gave it to us. Well, back when um, when I was working in Adelaide with North Adelaide Football Club, we yeah, wow. for two well for the year for two years prior, we like finished like bottom, bottom or second bottom. And then the year I started working there, it wasn't with this success wasn't because of me. It was more like a group yeah. collective sort of stuff. But we went, we ended up going on this really good run through the season. We we're like in the top five they had there, top five, similar to what they do the waffle. Yeah. Um, it was top five, and then we lost a whole bunch of games, coming going into the finals. So we finished fifth, right? So that's. Yeah. You got to win every game, yeah. and like you get the shitty, like even at Adelaide Oval where you play all the finals at, you still get the shitty small yeah. changes, this sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and we have to win every game to make the grand final, which we did. Like we won every won every so game, good. make the grand final. One we came up against like the best side in Norwood. Yeah, you had like this had like they have all of the essentially like the Subiaco of of Adelaide team. Yeah. Like you get they get yeah. all the star players stacked. come. Yeah, yeah stacked yeah. somehow. <laughs> somehow that they're cut. You know, yeah. to have all the players and yeah. Their player, uh, one of the players, Mitch Grigg, won the McGarry Medal, which is like this handover equivalent. Yeah, okay. um, so that, the team is like stacked, like yeah. you said. And then we came up against them. We fought fire with fire, like zero defense. That was like 120 to 130. Like the so score good. was so wide. So he's won. won. So everyone, yeah. So and they're the best ones, and you will never forget that. No, like, it was like think- 40,000 people at Adelaide Oval too. Yeah. And I was sitting on the bench, like doing the iPads. I was yeah. sitting there, the crowds are up there. I'm like, going like, nuts. Shit. Well, because ideally, you I'm going to do Yeah. You weren't supposed to win that. So nah. it makes everything so much better when yeah, you do. Yeah. And, like, I think that, like, I and even, you know, our first two years as West Coast, like, we've won three games mm. in total out of two years. But, like, I love that. Yeah. I love, Like, it's obviously you play to win and I'm competitive and I want to win. But it's, like, in the same sense, I'm learning so much mm. and I'm learning more. You always hear it so cliche, but you learn so much from losing. Mm. So, like, I <clears throat> just makes me excited for what's to come because yeah. it's, like, I feel like, everyone's learning like yeah. Dana Hooker she is like elite and I love her and, and so I look much. up to her mm. and but like she's still learning because yeah, you know always. we're we're getting beaten in the midfield so why like why is that it's not like you get you get kind of get over you know a bit too comfortable so um yeah we're in it we're sitting in a really good position at the moment I guess just with our learning and um you know desire to want to be better and yeah, yeah and it's also really cool I just remember this just then Congratulations, again. Congratulations, by the way, on, on, w- on winning that um, grand final. That's okay. really cool. Well, I didn't read about yeah. players, like, <laughs> Still your team. Yeah, but still yeah. the team. So, the team, we, um, <laughs> That's so funny. it's funny because we the last grand final that North Adelaide won was in 1991, yeah. like real early 90s, yeah. and there was only one player who was born before – one player we had in that team who was born before that year. So all of our players wow. were like – Young twenties, yeah. Because like, two thousand eighteen, we won that. So yeah. I think the average age would have been around twenty three in that side. Even I think we had like you know, remember you know Connor Rosie who plays for yeah, Bradley, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. played in that game. Wow. Um, Jordan Sweet who plays for Western Bulldogs played in that game. Yeah. So we had a real young side who ended up getting drafted. I don't know, three or four players. Callum Wilkie who plays for St Kilda now. He yeah, played okay. in that side. Wow. Um. So yeah, a few players end up getting drafted from yeah. there as well. Yeah. That, from our side, That's which so is cool. Good. Yeah. Hundred percent. So yeah. So and that was your was that your draft year that you played in that. Grand final against Israel? You, no. you get drafted the year after. I think I – what year was that? Was it 2018? 2019. 2019. So I came in Why well, can't I remember what year I got? Was it I got 2019? Yeah, it had to have been before, 2019. It must have been because I got picked up before the uh, Eagles team came into the comp. So there would have been three years without – no, two years without the expansion teams. I can't even remember the date. <laughs> but, yeah, so I – I was, def- I was 17 when I yeah, got wow. picked up by Eagles. I got signed on before the draft. So I didn't actually have to. Oh, you got signed on before the draft? Mm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So the team, when um, a team joins like expansion wise, like it would have happened ages ago in the men's, but obviously mm-hmm. the women's is now. And um, that was a point where we were all going through. So we're all in the AFL Academy, which is pretty much you get picked from oh, yeah. Swans to go to state and you get picked from state to go to the AFL yep. Academy. Yep. Um, yeah, so we're there and I guess that's kind of where all the AFL clubs start to, you know, kind of pick and, and get a bit Have of an eye on you yeah. and stuff. And, um, yeah, so I think you usually spend two years in that. So first year just went through as usual and then second year um, I was kind of doing a bit of training with – actually trained with Frio as well like as a train on for a little while. Um, I got a few photos of me in purple, so oh. I always compare the pair. But um, What well, looks better? The yellow and blue. I would say yellow and blue, yellow, yellow and gold, obviously. Oh, sorry, blue and gold, yeah. Um, that was gold. gold. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so ended up training on with both those clubs and um, Adam Selwood at the time, he's oh. probably one of my biggest mentors. I love him to bits. Um, every, every West Coast Eagle player I've had on here has said loves. Adam Selwood, yeah. Oh, I couldn't. 
Okay, anyway, he's off. Um, he's off on his own journey now, and full respect to him. But um, I miss him at the club. I can tell you that. But yeah, so I was training a bit with them um, at the time. Didn't really hear anything, and then um, you kind of have like a few check-in meetings just mm-hmm. to base around like the Eagles Academy. So they'll just run through like development oh, yeah. program mm-hmm. and um, where you're sitting and kind of this and this, but nothing really to do with draft or anything. And then um, we were still training at Domain Stadium. I always get sad driving past it because I just have so many memories there and. Now it's kind of all knocked down. Was that the old Subi? Yeah, the old Subi, the yeah, old Subi yeah, yeah, before obviously Optus came through. So not complaining about Optus at all. I think it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so we um, yeah, were training there for a bit and probably trained there for a year prior. And then there was one, Sales was just like, hey, mate, lucky you're right to schedule a meeting, like bring your mum in, whatever. And I was like, yeah, I was just expecting it to be a, you know, just a usual meeting. Walked in and it was like had this big PowerPoint thing just saying, like, Michaela Bowen, welcome to West Coast. No way. I was just like, what? And this is before the draft. So, obviously, this whole year, I was gutting it. I was, like, wanting to make sure that I was in pristine condition mentally, physically, like it was my draft year. Um, And then, yeah, I was just preparing. I was preparing for the draft compliant, everything. And then, yeah, it was kind of, um, if you're an expansion side, I think there's there's a few different categories. Like, they had to be within certain yep. age groups, certain okay. region, whatever, and – um. Yeah, I think it was myself and Rosie Deegan who yep. signed on with me as well. She's now off playing basketball and um, incredible athlete. Like she's obviously doing a bit of cross code and she, I don't think she's too much involved in footy at the moment, but obviously got an incredible opportunity in basketball. But um, yeah, and then so I was just sitting there and I, was, I walked in and I was like, okay. And I kind of didn't take it. I read it, but I was like, okay. And I think Sales was ex- expecting me to be a bit like, wow. That was, yeah. <laughs> I was just sitting there I was like, what? what? <laughs> And then, yes, yeah, so I was sitting there with mum and – Like a disbelief almost. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of looking at mum just waiting for – I wanted him to say it. Yeah, first, yeah, yeah. Unless I'd read it wrong because I didn't yeah. want to be like, oh, yeah, what is going on? And then be like, oh, you know, I don't even know what he could have said. But, yeah, anyway, and then that was the moment. I've still got a – um, as soon as I got into the car, mum was like, turn around. I don't want to take a photo of your face because I've never seen you like this before. Like I couldn't – I could not wipe the smile off my face. Oh, yeah? That was my draft experience. So yeah, extremely wow. lucky. Um. Obviously, yeah, myself and Rosie were the first two to get signed on and, yeah, before the draft. So I didn't have to go through the draft combine. Um, they stepped up early before anyone else had a chance. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. I, sometimes it's – I don't know if this is a bad thing, but, like, sometimes the girls that went through the draft combine, like, talking about it, I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I missed out. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, also, it's, it's a lot of It's a lot of hard yards and extremely grateful to be, you know, signed on beforehand and not have to worry about it, but – um, so you didn't even have to do the testing or anything no, like that? No, so that's testing? the draft combine, yeah. So I got signed on before that. How do you think you would have gone on the combine test? I was – I yeah, prepared – I think I prepared myself to be at the peak that I could for that year. Um, and I think even if I knew I was going to be signed on at the start of the year, I still would have done that. I mm. think because like I, I guess for me I'm, I'm, always, I'm always wanting to, like regardless of – if I had to do it or not, I'd want to be. But I felt, yeah, I felt I felt fit. I felt mentally ready for it. And obviously there's all that anxiety and stuff around, like, are you going to get picked up? Who's going to go where and whatever? And it's just, I guess for me, that was probably the start of my process of trying to channel my thoughts and um, get into the whole thing of like, you know, that probably then was probably when I really got into mental health because I started to realise, you know, there was a lot of girls that were going through the feelings of like, oh, what if I don't? And that anxiety yeah. and stress and so, like, I felt that at some times, but then, like, I even upset, started looking into it a bit myself and just, you know, the actual idea, actual idea of that yeah, you are in control of your thoughts. And that's, I guess, when I started thinking of it. So, I would have been 17 or so. so a bit yeah, that's so early to kind of realise that. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, it was just such a common um, common thing around, um, amongst the group that was just so, it was it was panicked, it was excitement, it was, like, a bit of frustration because girls were getting injured, like, in their draft year and mm. um, all sorts of things like that. So I guess for me, when I did get signed, um, I felt my role was then to support the girls that were going, to th- going through it because, like, you know, it's yeah. an incredible opportunity. My goodness, anyone would, would happily, you know, die for. So, um, sure. yeah, extremely grateful. You were saying how you looked into the whole mental health side yourself. What did you do? What were your resources? Did you go reading books? Did yeah, I think podcasts? for me, um, when I, I guess when I started playing, I've, it's really kind of cheesy and corny, but I've always loved quotes. I've always loved yep. motivational things. Like if you look through my Instagram when I was like 12, <laughs> they're really cheesy when like if you scroll down right yeah. to the bottom. I still do it now just because I love it and I guess I relate so strongly to it. And um, I don't know, I've always... I guess it probably started from the people that I looked up to. So, like, 
I know he's so common, but LeBron James, I've always loved watching mm. him. I've loved, loved watching Kobe. I loved, and that's, it's funny because I was never actually that um, involved. Like I didn't go that too far into basketball, but I always loved watching. I just felt the, the, the NBA was like, they were so motivated and they were so like driven. And, and obviously that's when like nowadays you kind of realize that LeBron's still a person and Kobe, <laughs> you know, you know, is still human and whatever, but um yeah, I guess those athletes just really inspired me to kind of um I guess break down a bit more as to what actually goes on because I feel like it's um, you know, there's so much detail behind um, you know, a mind of an athlete. And I guess that's what I actually seen a few videos once of LeBron and just the way he talked about like how hard like eighty percent of it's probably mental and twenty percent of it's physical. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and like you the biggest part that you see is probably the physical part. So it's like if that's 20%, like what is the 80%? And I wanted to find out what the 80% was. And so I used to I used to be on my laptop trying to – it wasn't frantic. Like I didn't – it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I have to try and yeah, – it yeah, just yeah. kind of evolved for me, I guess, naturally. And um, Yeah, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I've always been – I've always loved like um, just books that are all about like, um, you know, self-belief and self-confidence and because I just think it's so real and I think it's something that's just not talked about. Um, and I guess going through it myself and, you know, you still go through it like it. And I guess that's it just relates back to what I said about my brand is that like I want people to know that, um, you know, it's still so real and everyone goes through it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I wanted to try and work on my mental as much as I was my physical. And I found that really interesting. I don't know why. I it's crazy. It's, really it's crazy that you started it so young and it's almost like mm. you, it wasn't like you, you got a head start on it, but it was mm. like you said, you know, it evolved over time. So you weren't really like when you got to like 25 and it was like, shit, yeah. I need to work on my mental health. Yeah. Then you're in a frantic rush to kind mm. of get ahead of the curve. Like yeah. you were kind of started early and you kind of got an understanding of of <clears throat> a little bit of like what it's like. You did your own research so you weren't really frantically going after. So that would have helped you along the yeah, way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think it's it's also like a bit of a, I think grow as I've got older, like when I was younger, um, I think for me, like when I was older, it's kind of about finding a bit of a balance between because like mental health is so broad and mm. it was like I was so I was really into like um you know channeling into you know how you can bring the best out of yourself and how you can you know kind of deal with anything else that's going on but it's also a balance of trying to overthink those things yeah so like when I, there was a point when I was younger where I was like so on track and I was so I was reading all this motivational stuff and I wanted to be better I wanted better like better 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 and I was just going to the gym and I was and then I ended up with a stress fracture in my knee Oh shit. So like that is why and that was probably um I think it was in my second or first it wasn't it didn't keep me out for too long, but it was just that was caused from overtraining. So I, for me that was a stress like, fracture in your knee. Yeah. I never heard of so that. It was before. Just, yeah, I know. And that was obviously because I was just doing too much. Doing way too much. And like squats or running. Just lots of yeah, running. Yeah, I was yeah. in the gym and at that time I was at Swans, I was yeah, at that folks are running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, at, at doing everything really and um Still at school, and there was school sport that teacher wanted the sport teacher wanted me to do. And oh right, oh yeah, yeah, and the stress from school too, the stress of everything. And I just wanted to be, I wanted to be the best I could be. But it's like now getting older, I think I'm trying to piece like my next piece is like allowing myself to actually, like what I said to you before, I cannot sit still. So at the moment, like I'm trying to work on being okay with resting because I feel mm. like because I've developed this thing in my head that's like I just want to be better all the time. It's like I find it hard to because if I'm sitting down, it's like I'm. I need to kind of be aware that I am still getting better even though I'm resting, you know. Mm. Not there's even a, that like I'm still content in being my own self, but like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. There's an interesting quote that um, Jordan Peterson says and he's like a psychologist mm. and he always has this saying, he's like you always want to be the warrior in the garden mm. rather than being a gardener and at war. Yeah. It's like yeah, that exactly. saying, you know, you much yeah. rather know how to do too much or be yeah. out there and yeah, do a lot of things yeah. than being yeah. able to not – not doing like being lazy and then when, yeah. it, when the time comes have to put work in because you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's it's wild. Yeah. So it's really cool that I guess um, I've kind of had, you know, such a big push from a young age, I guess, and such a big drive to want to want to do that. But I guess now it's kind of not that I want to lose any of that at all. It's just finding enough to keep it consistent and to keep it without burnout and because um, it happens, it, it, mm. you know, and especially when, you know, you're so driven to um, achieve something or, like I said, just want to be, be be the best self that you can. So, um, 
yeah, and there's there's a million different factors that contribute to that. But yeah, um, yeah. did you feel like when you were going through school and you're trying to get the best out of yourself, especially from <clears throat> a schooling point of view, and then <clears throat> physical with your football and all your training? Did you feel there was like a lot of stress? Like, did you have a lot of self-imposed stress to try to get better and do all these, do everything kind of right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. And I like the quotations around the right, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, it's more I guess through school, and that's I guess when I started. So before school, I, like I was always kind of known as like the sporty kid, and I have my mm -hmm. sporty friends, and um, I'm actually doing PE teaching at the moment, and right. it's interesting because yes. we're talking about students that may not have loved PE growing up and what it would be like for them. And I'm just sitting there like, I love PE. Like, what are you talking about? Mm. Like, I don't know anything else. So, um, yeah, in school I love sport and I guess the most challenging part for me was when I started wanting to take my sport quite seriously and, um, yeah, I guess especially having like a group of friends around me that then it started to impact the the way I could interact out of school and, the availability I had to spend with them and um, the understanding, I guess, that I kind of had a goal of where I wanted to be. And, um, you know, so it comes down to the smaller things at school about what I was eating at school and, like, I was trying oh, wow. to eat healthy and every kid wants ice cream. Of course you want ice cream. But, like, in my mind I was like I want to – I love ice cream and, of course, I want ice cream, but it's just not the time right now. And I was working towards something that I never wanted to put on anyone else. I didn't want to say to my friends, like, I'm doing this. Like, how dare you kind of – I just wanted to – I wanted to keep my friends but still work towards I guess what I was what I was aiming for so um I guess that was the most challenging part and I'm really lucky in junior school I had you know an amazing friend group that now like um Emma and Emily they're two of my best mates and they're probably the two that really understood I guess where I was going because it can be taken I guess in in the wrong way and um mm. I think that was one of the hard things is that I did feel like I lost a fair few friends because um I kind of was on this path that I wanted to keep following and um, I guess my real friends are the ones that understood um, where that came from and um, yeah kind of what I wanted wanted to achieve and they've always supported me in that so um, you know they'll always have my you know full support for anything they want to do because I really appreciate the way that they've been there for me but um, yeah I guess just the, the load of school um, more from year 10 year 9 year 10 onwards because um, the load of school kind of picks up yeah. and then it's kind of like you're living too, so it's not just you go to school and it's really hectic and then you go home and debrief. It's like you go to school really hectic, go training, really it's hectic, go to sleep, wake up and probably train in the morning. And the body doesn't recognise the difference between stress and school and the stress of life. It's all, everything yeah, is stressful. Yeah, so it was body. Big, a huge mix. And yeah. so now it's kind of, um, yeah, I really, really cherish my friends that I have now because I just feel like they, and I will always come back to them when I think of, um, I guess, my mm. support network and, those are really understood. So, um, yeah, and everything happens for a reason, I believe. So they're, they're there for a reason. I'm sure. At that time, yeah. what were, like, how did you, were your resources in terms of, like, did you know how to, what you were training, like, in your diet? Mm. It was, did you kind of get that information yourself, research? Did you kind of, like, what were you doing in that time, like, training and diet-wise? Yeah, and I think, um, I think I was really actually quite lucky because I guess training-wise. Um, like gym and yeah. not so much the football, but, like, gym. I probably didn't start gymming like gymming gymming till my second year of swannies i reckon yeah. like when i was at swans i like obviously i think we were training i started off i reckon training wednesday nights and friday nights and that was like that was it and then doing a bit of school sport whatever yep um but yeah and then for me i think because like league at the time with Cara, Cara Donnell and Ebony Antonio, who is now <laughs> Cara Antonio um all those all those girls that i was like oh my goodness I want to, I want to be that, and I felt like I related so strong to that. So that was probably where, um, you know, I I could see where I wanted to be. So it was kind of like I I knew um, that that's what I wanted to push for. So when I yeah was down at Swannies, that's kind of why um, I guess my mind flicked to want to started wanting to do more, and I knew that um, so I guess I saw how hard they worked, and um, I've always kind of noticed how hard athletes work off away from the camera. Um, so, yeah, I guess from the training-wise, it all kind of picked up quite naturally. Like I started off, didn't start off hectic, so my body kind of got used to it as it was. And then obviously when you get picked up for state, then you're training Swannies and state. Then you get picked up for the academy and you're doing Swans, state and academy. So it kind of just ah. gets more. Um, but, yeah, I probably didn't start it actually gymming until second year of um, Swannies and then 
I guess I learnt, um, learnt through doing and learnt through experiencing and um, had extreme, like, incredible guidance through the state programs and obviously they had some programs spread out for us as well. So I never – I probably didn't do my own research on that. Obviously just kind of learnt that through I'll experiencing. Yeah, but, coaches. Yeah, but then nutrition-wise, my mum, again, um, love it a bit. She Like, I remember when I was younger, she was a bit more chill on the eating. As, <laughs> as she's grown up, she's um, she ended up going paleo for a while. So paleo oh, yeah. is just where it's just – like caveman diet kind of thing. So yeah. fruit, steak, salads, yeah. fruit, vegetables, no grains, Meat, no carbs, yeah. whatever. And um, mum's always been quite healthy and has obviously raised me and my brother to, um, yeah, just I guess never, never, it's never been in a don't eat this, don't eat that, like there's bad. It's just been keep a good balance, you know, mm. like if, if, if your base is healthy and, you know, there's always soul food out there that's a treat every now and then, which I always believe in. So, um yeah, I guess that's where the education around my nutrition came from. It was definitely mum and um, even nowadays, like um, I remember there was when I was playing at Swans, like I remember talking to the S and C at State and they're like, Oh, you got a carb up before thing and I was like, Hang on, mum. Mum doesn't have carbs. Like <laughs> carbs are you talking about? So So you wouldn't even have, so you have potatoes have, and stuff? I'd have a steak and salad before a game in the morning. Yeah. Right. yeah. Really weird. But anyway, that's just, it's all I knew. And so Do now. some carbs in the vegetables. but Yeah, exactly. A little bit every now yeah, and then. Me. But yeah, so um, as I've kind of obviously grown into, I guess, my own my own athlete, it's kind of mixing my base, which is mum and which is that um, that knowledge that I've grown up with, with my own kind of what's most beneficial for an athlete. Because mm. obviously mum at the time, like a salad and meat was kind of beneficial or, or enough or sufficient for mum. Um, and she's never, I guess, been against, she understands that I need carbs and I need, so she's never been like, never have it. But, yeah, yeah. um, so now it's kind of, now I kind of definitely guide my own stuff. Um, I just, yeah, obviously really grateful to have a good base from it. So do you have a f- your favorite meal that you like to cook? Like it might not be the best kind of meal for like a training or something, but a good meal that you oh, like. Good meal. Good, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I love, I was talking about mum. I was talking with mum about this last night. I just love food. I love it. I don't know where it goes. <laughs> like I try to put, I bloody try to put on weight, but I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I love a good spaghetti. It's so simple. Yeah, spaghetti yeah. bowls, lovely. If I ever go out, chicken parmi. First thing on the mm. menu, I'll grab that 100%. Um, Parma? Chicken parmi. 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 Pa- the you Victorians say Parma. Parma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we. I've got cousins. I've got cousins who live in Victoria. They say Parma. Like yeah, what well, is a Parmigiana? I understand that. Parmi is Parmigiana. Parmigiana. I can't go. <laughs> you, you, how do you make your spaghetti bolognese? Because I'm a. I come from an Italian heritage, so yeah, it's real okay. traditional. But I, yeah, Casey's yeah. Aussie, and she puts like vegetables and crap on that, and it's like, oh, mate. Just yeah, just tomato kind of base. Is yeah, that tomato, what you Tomato, a little bit, bit of, of herbs. Bolognese, you put a little bit of mints in that. Yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nowadays, you put people put capsicum. Carrot, what do you do? Do you put? I you mix well, mum used to make yeah. before mum was paleo. She would just use the can, and then mum's learnt to make her own stuff. So she put mints in, then she put tomato well, can, pasta. Can, can what the, pasta? Um, no, the what is it called? Canned tomatoes. The sauce. The sauce that you yeah. buy from the shop. That's oh, what she'd use. The canned tomatoes. The kind of, yeah. Tomatoes yeah, 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 yeah. So nowadays, mum, and this is what I've learned, I learned it from mum, so I'll cook up the pasta, I, I'll then cook the meat and the onion in with that. Do you mm-hmm. put onion in it? Mm, no. Sometimes, yeah. Onion. You can put onion, yeah. A little bit of garlic, maybe. And then um, this tomato passata. Yeah, yep. And then diced tomatoes, yeah. bit of herbs. I don't put any carrot or capsicum or oh, good. mushrooms. Yeah. I don't stand mushrooms. Mm. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's a bit weird. Is that all no, right with weird. you? Yeah. No, no, no. I'll turn my nose up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I remember when it was just, we used to be kids and back in SA, we'd all have to, every every second year, we used to go through and just get a whole bunch, dab would go and order all these Roma tomatoes and then you'd let them sit yeah. out and you'd boil them up. It'd be one day, it had to be in summer because that's the time when tomatoes yeah. are grown. Yeah. It'd be like 40 degrees in January. And it'd be stinking hot. And it was before we ended up buying the electronic mixer. And Nonna used to go and boil like this big freaking pot, boil up all tomatoes. So that would be hot. And you come out, you have yeah. to hand crank and crush yeah. all tomatoes. And then once it comes out once, you put all the skins back through again because you have to get all the, yeah, the juice okay. out. Yeah. And I remember just being there. I would have been like young, maybe like 10 or 12. And it's like dry reaching because it was 
It was, gr- it was just so gross. Much going on, it was yeah. Gro- it was like because you'd have all the seeds and the skin, and it would smell funky. Yeah, and it go through that math like you have a big tub, it'd be a big tomato sauce, yeah. in the tub, and then it would put all the salt because you have to put salt in to preserve Do you it. Call Nana, is that? Yeah, and it was it Nono? Is that? Yeah, Nono. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. He's passed away, but so cute. Ages yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Nice. It used to be so bad. It used to be so hot. It'd be flies everywhere because of all the moisture. <laughs> and then once you bottle them all up, you put the caps on, you put it in this big barrel. And is you have that just for you guys, like yeah, we make not it, selling yeah, it. Yeah, not selling it, but yeah. it would go to all the family. Yeah, so like okay, nice. Aunties and that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it'd be enough to do for two for that year, then the year after. Yeah. So every second year we yeah. do it all. Yeah. So you put all these bottles in the in the um in this barrel and you'd have to because remember, middle of summer, so 40 yeah. degrees. Yeah. And you have to boil them. So you have yeah. to boil it to seal um to seal the sauce so it doesn't like go off. Yeah, seal the caps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you try you so you're not as backyard and you have to bloody put in like a fire. To boil all these, all the process, these bottles, it? and it's like mid fire season. You know, yeah. like no fire, and yeah. you're like no you're making fire. <laughs> all for the tomato. All for the tomato sauce. <laughs> and it's a tradition, and it goes down. We actually yeah. got a couple of bottles here. I'd so. love to try it one time. It's just I said to buy a bottle off you or something. <laughs> And take one over. So right? good. <laughs> the problem is I can't get back home to get any more over. Yeah. Like even that and the salami, like I haven't had like salami for ages. Yeah. I have to like scone some off a few of the coaches who are telling here. Yeah, okay. Because you probably off. wouldn't put up with like the store bought stuff. Like oh, that. there's one or two. Like Ingo, there's a few there's a place over here that do so like a good wog store. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. They grab some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only place really, but it's never the same because sometimes the you get the sun from the butcher. Yeah. You have like um, yeah. the chili and, chili yeah, and stuff. Okay. And it's really dope. It's not, and none of this is good for you. Yeah. This is really nice. <laughs> soul food. Yes. Yeah, soul food. Yeah. And the problem was, I remember like sitting down with Nono when I was real young and I get my sweet tooth from my dad's side and then Nono, who's his dad. Yeah. And I remember sitting down, we'd have kiwi, kiwi fruit and he used to dip it into sugar and then he would have it. Yeah, it's because of sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd put a little yeah. bit of sweetness in yeah. there. And you'd have the um, Zeppelins as well. Yeah, okay. Which is just essentially deep fried dough. Yeah. Which is coated in sugar. I've had that before. So, yeah. It's like a donut. It's like a, but like not with a hole in it. Yeah, right. Essentially it is. Yeah. yeah. And it's like sometimes Donna puts a little bit of lemon zest in it as well. So it's yeah. a little lemony. Is that an Italian thing? Quite sweet. Zeppelins. Oh, it depends on what side of yeah. Italy. Like my dad's yeah. central side of Italy. So it's wine, passes, and some sweets. Yeah, okay. Whereas my mum's side, it's all like the southern side, which is like seafood. It's similar like to Freeman, who like. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. all the f- seafood like octopus, um, um, shrimp, and yeah, all that. What else? Of. What else do we have? Mussels. I can't oysters. Say. Oysters. Yeah, I don't like oysters. That's yeah. the one I don't like. Yeah. My mum loves oysters. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so they we would have Christmas, which I'm not there for this year. Be dad's side like the pastas and stuff for lunch. Yeah, and yeah. then like have tried fit all the seafood in for dinner. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, how long has it been since you've been over there? So I was there in I was a couple weeks ago for my brother's twenty first. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. No. And then like, it was the week after that. When they started letting in people from New South Wales and Victoria, then they've closed the borders off. I know. It's yeah. rough, isn't it's it? It's rough. Not everyone. All. Yeah. But it's all good. So, yeah. Where's we going now? So, what's your favorite lift in the gym? Favorite lift? Oh. I saw, I saw you the other day on the West Coast page, you were trapped by deadlifting, what, 70? I was just 70 about to say, yeah, well, we're, we're doing, so that weight at the moment is with like a fair few reps. So, that was on eight reps. Ooh, but like the. Anything that's like almost seven reps too many for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I only I weigh fifty four, fifty four kilos, so yeah, like right. I'm, I'm light. But that I think for my favorite exercise would probably be the trap bar. But for my back, I just it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think when I run, I run with quite a um, yeah, yeah, yeah. posture. Like, so like I, I run with my chest out, kind of thing. Yeah, so like a, yeah, yeah, back curves. A little off. So bit. Yeah. Looks like so like when I'm deadlifting, running. it's like. Yeah. I tr- I'm trying at the moment just to keep a flat back and like I don't want to obviously push it too hard that my, my form's out and stuff. So that's probably my favourite all round. Um, I love a bit of, a bit of arm day. It's always good. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Pump <laughs> so up. a bit of arm pump, a bit of beach pump. Mm, yeah, there was one beaches. I remember, I don't know if it was last year yeah, or the year before, pumps. where we had a designated Friday, which is just for a beach pump. Yes. Just arm day, which oh, is lovely. Nice. So <laughs> When I first started over here at the boys, uh, the East Rio, we had a problem of guys not not like they didn't like gym, but they kind of they needed to get bigger. Yeah. And okay. I created this whole program. We called it Dr. Jacked. And yeah. I'm like, so I was like, you boys are doing my program. And I was like, Dr. Jacked. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm Dr. Jacked. So I'm my backpack. Really? And it has like Dr. Jacked on That's it. So good. And then the boys are like, oh, yeah, like Dr. Jacked. And they'll be like, once the boys started getting like a bit bigger, I started calling them like doctors. And then they have, yeah. I was like, oh, what do you want to do today? And then they'll have like different things. So I like yeah. that. And then, and then Casey's pregnant, and then 
uh, when we all started, when the boys started to find out, they're like, oh, congratulations. Like, we all started calling it like Baby Jacked and yeah. all this sort of stuff. So <laughs> Bubba Jack, like, yeah, yeah, Bubba Jacked and this sort of stuff. That's so, yeah. so cute. That's I kind of the hardest thing sometimes, just what you're saying with the boys, is that like, um, like it's all the whole idea of being jacked is like so good, but it's like sometimes the results don't come straight away. So mm. that's why, like, I feel like even, like I said before, my partner Liv, like, she loves running everything, but just doesn't enjoy the gym because it's like, I feel like she said to me, she's like, when I run, it's like I feel, I feel like I've actually done something. I feel like I've worked myself. When she comes out of the gym, she's like, I feel sweaty and I feel just people everywhere. And I was like, well, you got to wait. Like, you got to keep yeah. going. Like, the gym's consistent. Mm. Um, and I feel like she'd love it. You know, she actually seen some results out of it. But yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. It's a hard one, especially. Yeah, I, I find it hard for people who don't understand it as well. Because obviously, yeah, because it doesn't come straight away mm. at all. And so, like, if you combine, I always say to live, if you combine the way that you're running with like even a little bit of gym, like your fitness is going to increase. Yes, yeah, like, so you get stronger. So, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You feel stronger while you run as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think about when I first started going to gym and why, because I remember just lifting weights in the backyard. I think just always kind of a bigger bigger kid anyway so even if i lifted away i got naturally just came easier yeah i just came i guess because obviously i would have started young and i was you remember being like year 11 year 12 yeah and the the, the reason why i actually started lifting weights is because actually a way of getting out of homework so like you'd be like oh i'm just gonna go lift some weights in the backyard and i'm like yeah right that's cool yeah exactly you know because like yeah yeah yeah, i wasn't like going skipping whatever yeah go with mates and doing stuff yeah they'd do my homework and they'll do my homework homework after but yeah i feel like just because I remember, like, even we didn't have much weights, but just doing like leg extension at home, my legs just like blew up. Yeah. It wasn't even like I was sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, like, well, that's, 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 it's so, so different for like, that's for what I mean. Like, some people, even for yourself, compared to some like another guy that like needs to put on to be able to like, because yeah. like, I, I don't know what your view is. And obviously, you've got a way broader um, background on it than I do, but like, my stepbrother is like, his dad is Scottish and like just so slim and like skinny, <laughs> long. And so he's, I remember when he was younger, it's just like he's always known just to be so skinny. Mm. And now he's grown up, he's like still been skinny, but he's been trying to eat more so that he can then create muscle, yeah. you know, out of that and have something to actually work from. So I feel like he was lifting weights before, but it was like he was lifting on his bones kind of thing. So he was just skinny. <laughs> yeah. He was toned, but yeah. just skinny. It's, um, um so, yeah. it's. A lot of it is genetics. So I'm I'm gifted to like all my like little meatballs, like yeah. Italian yeah. model size. So they're all my old man's like short, but like <laughs> tank. Oh, there goes your phone. It's all good. Okay. Um, Jack, like Jack guys in my mum's side family are all big, big fellas and stuff like that. So yeah. it's easy for me. And actually, more or less, I should actually be worried about not putting on too much weight. But something like that, it's all, it's all fighting genetics. Yeah. So you're, you're even got to be consistent on like, the, yeah, the biggest thing is consistency. And they're like watching your diet, like how much you eat. And if you are someone who really wants to put on weight, it's all about calories in versus calories out yeah, exactly. and making sure you're progressively overloading in the gym. So yeah. you're actually building something. building the weight yeah. and actually eating more because you yeah. have to make sure you're recovering, yeah. Um, yeah. doing that sort of stuff too. So yeah, and you said before that you were, it was interesting, you said you were trying to put on weight and it's yeah, a very like a to- like about, a, yeah. almost a like a controversial topic to talk about in female sports. Oh, 100%. Especially yeah. like a re- around weight. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. interesting to know from your perspective at West Coast, did they kind of come to you and say, you want to play in the midfield, we need you to kind of be at this kind of, like we don't want you to be like put on 10 kilos or this sort of stuff, yeah, but we yeah. need you like at this strength level? Yeah, well, no, it's a really good point because, um, yeah, I guess when I first, like anyone that would look at me, it's just like I'm quite small. I'm quite small in, and so I guess from if you were to analyse me without having any background, you'd put me in a forward pocket or something yep. because of, like I'm little and I'm, it doesn't look like I'll kind of be able to hold myself, mm-hmm. I guess. And that's, I guess, where it came from. So, um, yeah, when I first got to the club, it was probably a mix between myself. Um, I don't know. And it's interesting because I've I've read a few articles about a few girls in the AFLW and this um, incredible player, Georgia G, who plays for Carlton. And she wrote a really cool uh, – she, sorry, had a really good interview about um, – just her size because she's quite small but like yep. she's always I think mentally struggled a bit about how the commentators have talked about her so mm. they've always brought up you wouldn't just say she's a good player she's she's a good little player or like she's a good little or she'll and and it, it does turn into a mental thing um I, I think you know for myself it hasn't it hasn't got to the point where I'm like mentally like oh like I want to put on kind of thing um but it's exactly what you're saying like for yourself or for some people it's um you know and it's hard. I find it hard to talk about because a lot of people are like, I don't want to put on weight, like I want to lose weight. 
So it's kind of hard for them to lose weight, but it's hard for me to put on weight. So it's it's a really <laughs> interesting conversation. But um, yeah, I guess I've never felt, I've never had any pressure from West Coast. It's more just been, um, I guess for me in my um, development program, like one of my things was that I want to be able to hold myself more. So like I want to be able to, I always feel like as a small person, um, like in general, like I've been, I, I feel I'm able to throw my weight around like um, to my advantage, but it's more just, um, yeah, I guess I don't want to be, because obviously I'm on the wing at the moment. So like I need oh, to be able yeah. to run and I need to be, you know, if they wanted to put me as like one of the stronger backs, then I'd be like, okay, well, and it's just a conversation to have. So like I'd have it with the club and be like, well, I guess where's your viewpoint from it all? And and they'll never force me and be like, mate, you need eight kilos and you're not playing. Mm. It's not really, not really that point. I guess the only the only point I'd be worried about it is if it, you know, got to that point where it became a mental thing and it was like um, I was worried about what I was eating and I was worried about like I couldn't eat this and I could eat that and that's a point where I don't personally really want to get to. I know um, that a lot of like a lot of players love to count things and I think for me I prefer just to have um, have it quite free flowing and I think I'm extremely lucky with my genetics obviously just to um, like I think I do work food off quite easily. Like I said to you before, like sometimes I struggle to keep it on especially when we come into in season so like pre-season I'll usually try to lift more I'll try just try to get stronger yeah. even um and yeah so I'll and I eat I eat so much <laughs> like especially for a little a little part I eat a lot um but yeah so it's more just like I've got to make sure to try and eat a fair bit in pre-season so that because I know as soon yeah. as I get in, in season as soon as I start running like without running I burn it quite quickly but as soon as I run oh yeah no. it's just that's yeah, it's the same oh, yeah, thing with yeah. guys. Yeah, it's all it's all relevant, and it's all obviously put uh, indiv- like individual to um, you know each different person. Yeah. So the same with the yeah. guys. We have there'd be like a group of guys who be like we say we need to put weight on you over the off season, mm. and they do like it. They mm. do the work and this sort of stuff because they're not running. Is mm. that is put on the weight, mm. and as soon as we come back for the preseason, and within two, two or three K weeks, or they look exactly like they yeah. Yeah. they. Did before that's that left. exactly what I'm saying. You gotta have a mix of it. So, like, if you you create this cycle, and as long as it doesn't get toxic to the point where it's like, I'm running this much, I've got to make sure I'm eating this much, and it gets stressful and adding to you know all the pressures of being an athlete in general. Like, I guess my mindset is that I want to keep my own, um, yeah, my own approach to it as peaceful as I can, and, and yeah. just be kind to yourself about it all because it is like it is a lot. And just like you're saying about the boys, like sometimes it does get confusing and. And then they'll come back and be like, well, I, I put weight on. Like, what are you talking about? That's exactly what you wanted. Or, or, but it, yeah, I think from, you know, from my point of view personally, it's like mm. about having a balance of each. Yeah. Have a bit of gym running. Yeah. Get your eating in. So. Have you had, ever done a DEXA scanner before? Or? I did. Yeah. yeah. I what had are... a DEXA scanner. I couldn't tell you my numbers. Oh. My goodness. Are they, I think I got them on my phone. It's interesting to know, like, well, because it spits out like your metabolic rates and that yeah. sort of stuff. Because you're saying how much your. I'll actually um, look through that. I wouldn't mind looking through that because I didn't actually know it spits that out. So. What's your um like daily, like what's your daily intake? So what do you eat in the day? So yeah. Like so a, my general, general day, day um, I actually, two days ago, I sat down on my laptop and just, because I think my biggest thing for me is just ideas of what to, because sometimes, um, you know, it's it's hard to kind of fit. The appropriate eating around like your work day and, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I feel like if I if I trained on a Tuesday night, had nothing throughout the day, I'd be like, sweet, I'd know exactly what I want to eat when. But it's like Tuesday mornings are work from five till ten. Shit. And so I usually I, I try to get two yogurts in. I start at Mount Lawley store, it get chunky. Do all, the, chunky, yeah, do all yeah. the flowers and stuff. I try not to eat too many of them, but I do <laughs> every now and then. They're lovely. The one um, just opened up here in Frio. Yeah, one, one just did, which is really cool. So we just went there the last Sunday just to celebrate it all, which is good. But, um, yeah, so I'll usually drive there in the morning, have a little Yo Pro, get that in just to get the protein in, whatever, and then I'll drive to the Vic Park store mm. and do all the flowers there. And on the way there, I'll have a yogurt there. Um, after that, I'll then go home, try and have not something too big because I know lunch is coming up, so just something just to kind of top up because I don't, a bit more than two yogurts, but um, yeah. And then, so that's kind of like a work day and usually I'll have something on between like uni or something between. So it's kind of then making sure I have something to then eat at uni, between uni, and then I need to have something between uni and footy. So that's kind of the biggest challenge is trying to figure out when to eat what. So I guess if I was to plan out a full day without having anything on, probably ideally start of the day with like yogurt, Two pieces of avocado toast. I love that. Maybe, mm. um, yeah, that'll probably be it for breakfast, and then probably have a protein shake 
between um, just around morning tea with like a music bar or something and then probably a bit more of a chicken salad, chicken wrap, something for lunch. Um, and then, yeah, I guess just try and top that up with like a smoothie, some sort of smoothie, some sort of um, oat bar or something before training because I, I personally don't like to run on a yeah. really heavy stomach. But that's just my mm-hmm, personal mm-hmm feel um and then yeah for dinner i'll usually just smash it out with spaghetti or some sort of carb or something so yeah. do you try yeah. to eat especially around trade like two hours beforehand yeah yeah well yeah in a sense we have uh, a lovely um dietitian at, at the club nutritionist mm. dietitian i don't know which one it is she'd kill me for saying the wrong one um, <laughs> liana. Li- liana liana Liana, yeah did you speak to her yeah, she's, well? the she's beautiful she's yeah, she's, uh, she's gorgeous so um she's she been really there's no secrets no, she, there's no, there's no secrets. She goes, well. she yeah. goes. Yeah, so it's really um, – It's just so simple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she's been great. And I think because we've kind of shared a, bit, a bond more than you would with just like a – it's not like just a professional. Yeah. It's like I feel like she's kind of my sister in a way and I can talk to her and really yeah, be honest, great. open yeah. with her about it. So um, she really helped because I remember in my first year I was like, I don't know what to do. Like – mm. um, like, I don't know if I should put weight on. I don't know if I should be eating this. And then so she's actually helped me, like, with the protein, which is really good. It all gets batch tested and everything, like it has to. Yeah. So who, um, what company do you? Musashi. 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 Yeah. It's, it's just the protein. Yeah. Um, like, with nothing nothing else in it. So that's, like, on her behalf. Like, she's all cleared. It's oh, all sweet. good to go and stuff, which is good. So, um, but, yeah, I guess, like, I, I've had questions. And that's where, like, I always come back to, like, I always want to learn more. So then I know for myself, like I can, it always comes back to like what I'm saying, just wanting to be better. So me asking Liana and having such broad access to her is like such a huge part for me. And like I said, she's beautiful and, um, yeah, provides a lot of help, does a few workshops with us a year and um, especially with the protein thing because I was like, how many, because I've read something, I was like, I don't know, you can only have a certain amount of protein at a time, then you have to wait. And then I was like, when can I have this protein shake? She's like, probably don't want to have you know, more than such and such a day. So, um, yeah, it's really good to pick her brain. She knows a lot. So, yeah. yeah, really good. Other than the protein, you don't take any other supplements or anything no, like that? Nothing. No, I didn't before. I'm not really – I'm not a no, huge like believer in it. Nothing, yeah. no, no, not really. I like, I personally – and I think that's probably the way I've been brought up through mum is just having Diet, everything naturally yeah. and, um, you know, I'd rather eat some fruit or get my vitamins from mm. – somewhere else but that's just me personally like i have nothing against anyone that um decides otherwise so yeah. i just have the protein at the moment do you you, you girls get tested don't you at all for, for, yeah like, i got there. tested after um yeah. and they can do it anytime anywhere so Throughout as soon the year, as you right? yeah as soon as yeah, you leave wow. you have to notify of your um of your whereabouts just because i obviously asada um yeah i guess just anytime anywhere they need access to test you so and, <sighs> So obviously trying to keep the competition fair, which I fully respect. So after the after our last game of the season, and I was like, oh yeah, we got flogged by St Kilda. They absolutely killed it and smoked us up. And um, yeah, and then it was just like all the girls are like, oh yeah, it's in the season now. We'll just chill out. Like we'll head over to Lake Car, um, kind of debrief everything. And everyone was in the showers, and then I couldn't walk off the field. She's like, hey Michaela, you mind if we go test you? And I was like, I couldn't get anything out i couldn't like i don't oh, know i wow. drunk the whole it was such a hot day yes yeah, especially because so, you're summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah so dehydrated so that was really i don't know i was kind of like this it's always in the back of your mind it's like oh yeah right oh it's like, have i had anything have i had anything and never intentionally would i have anything but it's like i remember when yes. i was in the academy um astro connor who played for um geelong she said that one time there was an athlete that had on the plane just had like a little protein ball that had yeah. some banned substance in it. She had no idea. Yeah, Next minute scary. got tested and she was banned. I was like, ah, oh. yeah. like that absolutely scares me. Because it all comes so, off the same assembly line and exactly. sometimes they don't clean it properly. And exactly, then, yeah, and, and that's why. So like for me, it's it's more convenient to just go in and get my own protein and be like, yeah, it's the same one that Liana's giving me, but like those ones are actually all batch tested everything, yep. which we're so lucky to have, obviously. Um, yeah, I, it'd be my worst nightmare. Like yeah, because <laughs> you, you put on some hard work and then, yeah, so Something no like fault of your just, own, yeah, oh, especially yeah. if you haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, so there's always a bit of it's panic, tough. but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. tough. Do you, um, so you know vitamins and everything like that? Mm. 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 Be interesting to see how much of a benefit it would, even if like if fish oils or anything like that. And Yeah, no, it's how something much, I'm... You, like, you don't know, right, if it's tested, fish oils, 
Especially if you're eating deep fish, you like a fish. I don't really mm. like seafood. I love. Don't I, don't, I, don't, I like fish. That's it. I won't touch any. Salmon, salmon's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, well, that's I'd, the thing. I'd be more than, and if that was something where we came to the point, like I'm never, I would never close my mind off to it. It's more just like I've never really mm, dug into it that much. So mm. the whole weight thing as well is like, especially for guys, mm. you, you have guys like it's like weight and performance is always like an interesting one, especially if you've got mm. like your fat mass is like mm. the stuff that you is not actually workable. Like it doesn't give you anything on the field. Like it's yeah. just there, you're just carrying it as extra yeah. load. Yeah. It, there's not really a factor until your performance starts going down. Like, you know, you might have a couple of weeks of bad, might bad a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden coach goes, oh, it looks a bit overweight. Is that a yeah. contributing? You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it could. Like yeah. if someone was a generally like a good runner yeah, and then you might have a couple of bad games, no fault. Like it might just, you know, it might just be off for a couple of games and yeah. then it goes, oh, it looks a little bit unfit. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. always the point, you know. It's always hard to kind of say, a huge part he, did he play? It, yeah. Did he play poorly because he's put on a, like a kilo or whatever it was? Yeah. You know, he might actually just put on a couple, like, he might just be yeah. put on some muscle. Yeah. You know, it might There's just so make some. There's so many different look- factors, though. Like, and just like what you're saying is that the coach questions your weight straight away or something's wrong straight away. But, like, you know, if you have a good player and they're getting tagged for a few games, of course they're going to have, you know, a yeah. shock in a few games. Or if they're, if they're on the wing and the ball's just on one wing the whole side, of course yeah. they're not going to get, like, there's so many different factors. And, that's where I personally think the mental side comes into it because that, for mm. that player and for that athlete, it's like, oh, like I feel like it gets on you a bit. Sometimes it does get on you a bit, yeah, yeah. And that's where, like, I'd love to, um, you know, if anyone ever felt that way, like I, you know, I would. That's probably the point where I'd start to worry is where it, where it became mental mm. and started to affect the player. That's why I have such a, a wild admiration for guys, guys and girls who in the fight game who have to like compete at a weight weight class, oh, and no. it's like. And you sit know, there and, and sweat themselves and sometimes, out. It's incredible. But like something like someone yeah. like I've had Vic and, and Brian on podcast, but even mm. like the guys, I might end up getting even like other fighters. Yeah. They might get 10, 15 kilos above their like fighting weight and then they yeah. start to cut down and get right to it. And then it's, it's like almost a really bad cycle mentality of oh, it's and then like huge. it takes once you start stressing, everything. once you start stressing about your weight too, it gets hard to come off because your body, you know you're stressing and the body yeah. just wants to hold on to yeah. it. What you've got. What you've got. Yeah, and then, you know, there yeah. might be a couple of kilos to go and it's two or three days out and they're yeah. in, a, in the sauna for hours, like, yeah. dying. I know. Essentially, they're cooking themselves. Yeah. And then they've cut all this weight and then they have to weigh in and then within 24 hours they have to rehydrate yeah. and then Before. have to compete. Yeah, yeah. Which is when they're competing um, under fatigue, under, you know, they've drained themselves the last two hours and there's yeah. no way they're at back back up to 100 percent it's yeah. almost impossible i know you need, yeah. and then, and then another thing cycle, you got head head trauma and two yeah. and then if you're going in underdone in your dehydrated suit so you've taken all your water out of your brain essentially yeah. Yeah. And you're gonna yeah. go get punched in the head yeah. yeah oh god i couldn't imagine it i honestly i reckon if i i don't know if i'm gonna say this after what you just said but if i didn't play footy i'd love to do boxing or something mm. something like that some sort of fighting would love to i don't know yeah, why I just have a weird urge to do it, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how do I'd it. feel getting my head knocked in after no. Yeah, it's no good. No water in my it's brain. Not, <laughs> yeah, no. Thank God I've, I've yeah. had to go through any like we'll fight, fight yeah. camp thing. Yeah. But usually, so yeah. when I first started games like Muay Thai, we started sparring. Yeah. You wear all the headgear like when I was in my first like the white kind of shirt they give you. Like yeah. You, you're beginner. Well, I'm a beginner, but they call you like intermediates is the first one. Yeah. No. Oh, they call like, whatever it is. First one you wear your headgear and that sort of stuff, and even after first. Two times after sparring, they give put you in with the coaches, and you just kind of get your head knocked in to kind of teach you to wave through the fire and how hard it actually is. Because when you're hitting pads, you feel like a superstar because you're punching so hard, and like, but no one's really fighting back. But when you have to spar your coaches who've bloody Mm. been doing it for 15 years, it's a lot. And then they, you feel like, yeah, you try to get one strike in, and then they're so fast. I remember coming home and just lying in bed and be like, straight to sleep. My head was oh, just having headaches for days. Banging, hey, yeah. But yeah, but then like. Now I've kind of gone up a bit. I can take the head guard off. I know I actually understand defense. And Are you still stuff. doing a bit at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's cool. probably why I I didn't realize where I would put my glasses. Yeah, like before this yeah. podcast, I was looking for my glasses. Yeah. Didn't know where I put them, and it's probably because I got head. Wow. I got punched pretty hard yesterday. So yeah, there's wow. been times in we've had to, we're, we've done shark tanks. So there was a guy who was getting ready for a fight, and he would be um, in the ring, yeah. and he would have oh, three or four guys out of the ring, and every two or three minutes, a fresh guy would come in, and he would just be in there. On like, the same guy. On the like, so the same guy was still staying in yeah. for the fifteen minutes. With but fresh. every two week, every two minutes, a new guy would come in to spar him. So he's getting tired, yeah. and fresh guys come in. Yeah. And when that happens, the guy who's been there for like fifteen minutes, when it gets along, he kind of 
you feel the weight and how hard it actually like of actual fighting. Yeah. And um, you can't, yeah. not that he, he turns or not, like an, it's an extra gear that person goes to because fresh guys coming and beating on you and you're getting yeah. tired and it's yeah. like, he takes it up to like an animal, like he finds a switch, a gear. And animal kind of, instinct. Yeah, it? a bit of, yeah. yeah like Where are you instinct. doing it at the moment? Champions gym. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, wow. I, so I came in the ring. It was like almost, it would have been the 14th minute or something, like 13th minute. Wow. And the coach goes, and I, he, I hit him a few shots. He kind of got me with one. And he was hurt. So they got like, get it in, like rush in, rush in. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not a rush in type of fighter. I'm a bit more of a stand back counter yeah. type of fighter. So I went yeah. to rush in and he clipped me hard and I've just gone, stood still because I was like, I felt like got cracked hard. Yeah. yeah. And he hit me again and I was like, just covered up. And he says, I hit me and I just had to stay there and just finish the round off. Mm. Man, I was hard. And then I came home and then I had the worst headache. Yeah. Definitely like imagine. concussion symptoms. I can and stuff imagine. Like that. Yeah, well, well, it would be. Have you had any like head knocks in playing footy? <sighs> Too many. Too? Too, yeah, I reckon yeah. that was like touch wood. I haven't had that many bad. That's not wood. It's metal. Yeah, yeah no, there's a wood. <laughs> at injuries, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. So you have had had to have the two weeks too off. Too many at the moment, but I've had. That's probably my biggest thing is my concussions at the moment. I had mm, a few. Had a few. Yeah, well, I had a few at Swans, and then I had another couple at State, and then I haven't. I think I had one at training at Eagles, oh, and that's wow. been it. So now. I remember Sel was saying to me, he's like, mate, you're getting to a point. I've seen a few doctors about it and um, Sel was like, you're getting to a point where you've got to watch what contest, like you've got to be smart about things. Like, mm. There's no point you being going up at the back of the fly against the Ruckman to try and or someone else because it was, I don't know if you, you know Mackenzie Darrick. She, no, she plays for Eagles and she's just moved over to Adelaide actually to um, explore some opportunities but she played for Subi and this yeah. was one of my biggest ones in um, Swannies. And so she's my teammate. Like We're best, like such good mates. And I was running back with it like this and like put my head and Kenny was coming for it and put her knee like right in the back of my head oh, shit. to the point where I was like, I was knocked out in the field, everything. Mm. Um, and, yeah, that was probably so now even I feel like that has an impact on the way that I play. Like it's that's probably a mental barrier for me at the moment is I feel like half the time a contest comes up and I'm just I'll turn around and get in the trap or something or I'll get there for a handball or um so that's obviously a huge barrier and something that's just at the back of my mind but um yeah I remember having a few um a few scary ones at Swans when I was younger I just didn't know any better yeah I was going in for the ball with my head I just yeah, wanted yeah, to win yeah, it yeah. I was in youthies and we obviously got taught how to tackle but like when you're on the field like you just you want the footy and so like I remember getting cleaned up and there was one bad one where I was that happened and I was like vomiting afterwards oh, like, after the game and it was like yeah real bad black it was like dirt I was vomiting shit. oh it was horrible I've uh, been yeah so they're probably my worst it's funny you brought that up because they're probably my worst um, damn yeah worst worst bit at the moment but I was talking to um, an older an older footy player mm. a couple of months ago and he was, I was saying to him kind of the difference between like the fighters concussions or the yeah. fighters when they get knocked out and then when footy players get knocked out is that you don't you get the same. For the same, if you both get knocked out, you don't know it's coming. Yeah. So we feel like fighting, yeah. Yeah. and you can kind of see punches. Like you see the punches coming, and you can brace, and you can in like yeah with boxing and like Muay Thai. A lot of the injuries they get for like head collisions happens later in life is like a build up of the head trauma, but you're not necessarily getting knocked out all the time mm. because you're seeing it coming. You kind of brace. So there's like a kind of classify as like impacts. It's like medium impacts. Yeah. But whereas like footy, you don't see anything you see it coming like you said going back for the flight and you mm. get a back of your neck and you're not mm. bracing so your neck you, yeah, you get the head and you actually get the impact and then you get the head the for your head and then you hit the floor and you get the third mm. it's probably like third mm. time your brain rattles rattles around, around yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's bad in that aspect too and then you get knocked out the same with fighters who get knocked out like in the fight too yeah. it'll be one where their head might be down and they get a punch i haven't seen coming and the neck just turns and whiplash oh. and then you hit the brain and then you knock the floor some it was actually them, um, i've seen some of them but just yeah nuts. we were at, we at the fights two at domination fights two weeks ago yeah, okay. and only one one guy got knocked out and it was from an elbow so this guy so it was more tough fights so i thought yeah. elbows he went to cover up so his hands up like this yeah and the guy snuck his elbow through the middle of his guard and got him straight in the middle of his head like what, that. Through that? Yeah, through the guard. So through his gloves. It's like a leading like elite elbow. So yeah. he's just gone up through yeah. his elbow like this, through the middle of his guard, hit him straight in the head right. and it's just dropped to his knees and then flat out on the floor. She was cold. It was out yeah. cold. And the ref goes, one, 
two, like count again. Yeah, like, yeah. bro, he's out. He's cooked. He's yeah. out, mate. Why are you counting? Just wave it off. Yeah. Oh, poor guy. But yeah, you wouldn't have yeah. seen it coming. One hundred percent. Yeah. So it was embarrassing. Was, yeah. And an elbow impacts. Freaking hard. Yeah, intense. I'm not gonna imagine. And it was no pads too, so it was straight elbow, blood everywhere. Wow. So full on. And it's yeah. well, I've said it before as well on the podcast, and they do it really well at the UFC because I've it's massive. So much money gets invested into yeah. these athletes because they have over 700 fighters on the roster and their big thing is like yeah. looking after their performance. So they do a lot of um, – each athlete gets access to their gyms and this sort of yeah. stuff if they wish to choose to, yeah. like the medical staff, doctors and this sort of stuff as well, nutritionists. Mm. A lot of them now recently um, – we were talking about the weights and this sort of stuff. A lot of – probably in the last two or three years, there's been a big kind of push for the athletes to kind of get better on their diets or kind of – you have to. No, when they, I talk about the weight classes, a lot of them want to fight at a lower weight class. So when they kind of rehydrate, they can get up to a higher yeah. higher weight in the in the ring yeah. or in the, in the cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can have a bit of an advantage yeah. in quotes, but really what's that advantage? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they have actually used to have this, um, they've used a UFC PI to um, get a bit of an edge. So they're getting better health. So they, a lot of them now actually look better in the ring, a bit more. They're fighting at a natural weight class yeah. instead of cutting too much weight. But yeah, right. another another thing that I was listening to a podcast from Duncan French, who's the president of that of the Performance Institute, mm. and they've been talking about uh, recovery f- from a brain perspective. So they've been lot, doing a lot of studies on taking ketones as like a um, for after like heavy sparring sessions, like after matches, to kind of What's that? What's a- you know you go on a like, keto diet. Oh, keto, yeah. So like, yeah, so you yeah, go on yeah, a keto 100%. diet, and yeah. it creates ketones in the blood, so it uses wow. that. So your brain uses that as fuel, yeah. Um, yeah. as energy. Wow. And so if you take it as like ex- exogenous, which is a like powdered form, take it like a, as a supplement. Mm. They take it after hard sparring. So it just helps the brain recover. They've seen through other through their studies wow. to help recover from hard sparring. So they take it usually like a. That's probably one of the things they've been doing. They've been doing another study on cordyceps, cordyceps, which is like the the mushroom, so you know, magic mushrooms. Yeah. Essentially, that's their. The non-psychoactive element of that, they've been using it to kind of help the brain. That's what kind it comes of down recover. to. You need to find mm. anything. So something. it'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah that sort of stuff yeah. too. And I've always said, and even stuff like CBD oil as well, which is the non-psychoactive element of, of marijuana, yeah. which I actually take some of it as well, is yeah. um, you can buy it legally, which is fine, but obviously come up tested and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I buy the non-test. I buy the tested family version too. So yeah, I'm okay. not sure. It's not sport tested, but for like <laughs> yeah. work and yeah. like if you're Everything on the mind like that. that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, they helps with like inflammation, but also helps with anxiety and helps with brain health too because it keeps everything all the swelling down. So yeah, nice. thing from a head knock perspective, yeah, yeah. brain swells up because it's injured. It's the first thing you want to bang. Do. And the cordyceps sort of stuff too is all about um, keeping the neurons healthy and active because once, wow. especially when you get knocked out, your neurons start to die. Yeah, and yeah. once neurons die. You don't get them back, nah. so it's about keeping them healthy. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it's really so. It? Long long story short is, yeah. sure the UFC and over in America they have a lot of leeway with what they can do, because the UFC are putting a lot of research into it. Is how much can we take out of it from like an AFL or even like NFL perspective too? How much are they putting into research into the brain? Like you, whether it's you know we get tested by side and this sort of stuff. Yeah. Whether it's you can get exemptions to use this sort of stuff or you can get into like testing sort of like testing streams and how much it helps you like athletes out after after football as yeah, well because you yeah. can imagine a lot of these injuries happen later in life like it's yeah. not like you don't really experience you it now because it you're young yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 if you if you do it now as like a preventative measure so you can last longer yeah now i remember That's watching wild. that um something on Netflix about Aaron Hernandez. Oh, yeah, that's wild. And when they cut his brain open to yeah, see, and it was just like, yeah, yeah, you know, and that's exactly what lies. And obviously not to that extent, like everyone's different in, in terms of their symptoms and stuff, but that's like obviously a, a huge case of it. Mm. But um, so interesting to see, you know, the impacts on that and, um, you know, the amount of research that probably has come from that even and, the you know, all the information that's come from that is just you know, it's huge. That's yeah, huge. It's wild. Really interesting. It's almost like you could talk about it for hours. <laughs> you could. You could. You could. Yeah. Um, you said earlier in the podcast as well um, that you you were talking about going to hubs for this season. Yeah. yeah. So like, I don't think it's even come out in the media. So what have you? Yeah. So we it actually it came out. When was it? Um, I actually know we're going away. We we was. It's been a 
you know, a, a whirlwind. I didn't of notice that. Plans and a while we had the fixtures away. have come out, but like you actually have to look at it to notice that we're away yes. for three did, away games I or something. That, yeah. yeah, so we're not coming back home. Like we're just staying um, in Melbourne for the first first couple of weeks. I think you're here. Yeah, I think it's two or three rounds. Yeah, maybe. We're here. I think we've got Brisbane Gold. No, sorry. Yeah, Brisbane Gold Coast and Adelaide. Notice, I did notice that Adelaide were here two weeks in a row. Yeah. 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 Ah. Yeah. And then we I'm trying then to get go a couple away. of girls from Adelaide to come on the podcast. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we we go away for th- just under three weeks to Melbourne. And then hoping I think they're hoping that the borders are open because if they're not, we're gonna have to quarantine or something. But we just, I think at the club now, because we obviously it's a common topic, but we get to the point where it's like there's not really a point talking about it because it's just going to be so different to what you plan it out to be. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, yeah. so now yeah. we've got the fixtures is really cool. Um, but yeah, the, there was supposed to be a floating fixture, and now we've just found out we're versus North Melbourne for the first time, which is wicked as well. But yeah, well. Um, yeah they're obviously just backing the fact that the borders will be open. Mm. So it's been a lot of, a lot of you know things with the quarantines and COVID and fixtures and yep. we've been waiting a while for it. So it's nice to finally. What's it like? So it obviously all. your first season football was it like traveling and was it exciting? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was really cool. Fun? Yeah. Really fun. My goodness. Yeah. It's, you're playing AFL and that's, you know, the biggest part about it. And my first game, we versed Collingwood over in, um, over in Victoria, which was just incredible. And I remember running and being like, running through and then being like, fuck, Shani Layton. Oh, I've got to just oh, keep no. paying attention. Like just keep trying to like, Focus on actually the fact that they're just bodies and not yeah. like obviously because you look up to so many of them. Oh, and, that's wild. Um, yeah, obviously as you play more and more teams, like we haven't even played Carlton yet, and <sighs> actually met Darcy Vessio. I met her um, at an awards night, but I've never played against her. I love her. I, I think see. she's hilarious. Um, but yeah, even seeing her or Taylor Harris, I never met her before. So um, obviously it's a whole nother thing. But yeah, I guess. Um, what was your question? I'm so sorry. We're going off topic. Um, uh, flying. Flying, yeah. yeah. Flying so the overseas. First, the first overseas, season. Playing, uh, yeah. Stuff. The first season we was really cool. We um, obviously have done a bit before um, because of um, state and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it was really cool, I guess, just flying across with – it's. it felt weird because it was like these are all the girls that I'm now in my team that I've versed and they were – because everyone's come from Waffle that, like, I knew of them and I knew that some half of them come from Frio and – like a new of them and you just get so close with them. So in that sense, it's really cool to fly away with them because like we are talking about before, it's just all the off-field stuff and getting to know them. And, um, yeah, it was the first season was actually probably – was it the first season that was interrupted by COVID? It was. I think we only got – played like five or six rounds in the first season and then it all got cut off by yeah, COVID. Yeah, and then yeah. last year – It would have been that – yeah. That's yeah, the first yeah. year. I can't believe it's been that long already. And then, yeah, the first – second year um, – we were that I think the second year was the hardest mentally for all the players because that's when hubs were being like it was like you're gonna have to go. We got told one week we were going away for three weeks, yeah, and then I remember, yeah. the next day it was like, no, nah, we're staying here, but then we're going away for and it was just like, oh, and girls were working and everything, and so now I think that's why they've just said we're just we're just gonna do it, rip the bandaid off. It's just gonna happen, like no matter what kind of happens, we're hoping that the borders open. But I love flying personally, so um, I don't know how I'm gonna go on the hub. I do get a bit homesick, so I've oh, seen. Right I've asked the because obviously you've got the two Irish girls that have come over, and um, you know there's Haley Bullis who's come from Victoria, Maddie Collier, Sydney, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and a few SA girls as well. But um, yeah, I asked them, and I was like, you know, like, do you reckon you're gonna find it harder because being in a hub because you're already away from home, and now you're going yeah. away from where your home was supposed to be? Like, is that gonna be? And they were like, nah, it should be fine. Like, Absolutely. they're all away from home anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's more, it's going to probably going to be eye opening because it's like we're going to experience what they're feeling that just gets overlooked so often. I always mm. say that. I'm like, I think it's just incredible because playing AFLW is hard enough as it is, like with a commitment, but alongside being away from home yeah, um, for such a long time. I guess I we're had, only um, going away for yeah. three weeks. I had John O'Marshall on the podcast. Yeah, back. Okay. He, um, he yeah. played at St Kilda during the whole hub time. Yeah. And he said that's probably the. How long were they away for? Do you know? Yeah, a long time. Yeah, he struggled was- real hard. He yeah. talked about it in the podcast, it was really cool. You opened up a little bit yeah, about like how hard mentally it was and stuff. Yeah. But he said the, the thing that they did to kind of get away from it all, because a lot of it is like, especially for someone like he, he wasn't really like an AFL, like goop, like a lover. Like he wasn't like, oh, yeah. I feel this, I feel like 24 7. He, mm. Especially, you know, you've gone your whole day of training and then you come down, you sit down for dinner and you sit down next to your coach and he starts yeah. talking about footies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Enough. So Just chill out. a lot of guys were like, Went out and did like he did cat. I think he said catfishing. Like I went out yeah. and like bought all the, the gear and they were like yeah. googling the places like to buy uh, to to go search for the best biggest catfish wow. and this sort of stuff. And they're putting uh, 
Gold Coast, Gold, Gold Coast or like yeah. Cairns or somewhere Gold up, Coast up north. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and it was like they were looking for all their all this fishing and some guys playing to play golf and this sort of yeah. stuff. So I guess you got to find your own kind of things to do. Try to like keep a schedule, like a like a yeah. football schedule, like similar to what you do now, but then kind of find time to get away and then take a break from that. Yeah, I think it's exactly what. And there's been a few obviously questions um, amongst the group just around the hubs and what it's going to look like. And obviously we're going into Melbourne, which is where COVID kind of is at the moment. So there's a lot of, I think, just questions about whether we're going to have to stay inside because of the close contacts and everything. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a, a talking point that we've discussed and like even with rooms and stuff, like I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure we get our own rooms and stuff because oh, cool. it's more like, they want to try and keep it as if you're just living in Melbourne for a bit. You're not going on a three-week footy trip where it's Melbourne's like, cool. yeah. yeah, like when we went away for state trips, it'd be like you'd spend oh, a but, week yeah, there, yeah. but it's like you'd be in your shacking dorms, up, yeah. you'd be shacking up, and then you'd go team meetings at nine. You'd then go to um, do a footy clinic. You'd go do footy this, footy that. Go to yeah, the theme park yeah, or something. yeah. Like the whole week is around footy. Yeah. Um. So I think they'll they'll obviously like at the moment we're training. Um you know, most days, but varying between gym and training. But yep. I think they'll obviously try to keep that quite consistent and um, I guess just make the impact of being away from home a little bit smaller. So keep, mm. allow us, is exactly what you're saying, catfishing, whatever, fishing, golf. Um, I just hope that, yeah, we're out, we're actually able to kind of go out and about a little bit. Um, Do you of know if you're hopping in Adelaide? I don't think so. Yes, I know. I yeah. don't think so yet. Yeah, um, okay. The SA girls were dying for that. They all wanted to go back. Who, who, which SA girls do you have playing? Um, we have Amber Ward and okay. Lauren Gauchi. We call mm. um, Amber Ward is Wardy and Gauchi, we call her Gwoki. Gwoki? Gwok. Because yeah. it's almost spelt like Gwokamoli. Pretty yeah. much. It's G A U C I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's Gauchi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can say Gwok. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, nice. no, they're beautiful Gwoki. girls. And obviously, I think Amber, I was, um, she opened up to me a bit about it, just about kind of how she gets a bit homesick sometimes and like I really appreciated that because it was like I felt, um, you know, and it's really cool because those two are like best mates and they come over and obviously they support each other and, um, yeah, I guess at the club we want to support them as much as we can just as much as the rest of the girls that mm. are interstate and even from another country, which is incredible, the Irish. Yeah, girls, yeah. So that's, that's huge. That's wild, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's not even just leaving their homes. It's like leaving like the two Irish girls have got partners that um, – you know, they've tried to get over a few times, just hasn't worked out, but um, their That's families, tough. everything, jobs, like friends. Mm. And so Ash McCarthy also came came from, um, yeah, came, came along with the Irish girls, sorry, and she, like, she just loves it, messaging the group, like, anyone want to do this, I want to do that. Like, I love it about her. My goodness, I always want to hang out with yeah. her. So I feel like that's going to be me when I go over is just wanting to kind of stay involved with the girls and, um it's funny because usually on away trips, I tend to just kind of, if we go away for a game, we will fly away on the night before and then fly back the night of the game. Oh, wow. That's quick. Yeah. So we fly, if we play on Saturday, we'll fly over Friday and then fly back straight after the game on Saturday, which is um, a plane ride on the way home. Ooh, that's hard. But <laughs> um, yeah, because was like, could you be so, t- sore, so sore, sore, and tired? And some of the worst part is, be is where girls much. get injuries is that like, and they're sitting there and like, obviously, because of the oh, yeah. plane just like, so they've up, got to yeah, sit there and like compression. I think one girl broke a finger or something one time oh, and she painful. was having the, yeah. So um, usually like, especially I guess because it's round game and mental prep, I like to kind of do my own thing. I hang out in my room. I don't, I don't, I love music. So I'll just sit there, listen to music or watch some mm. TV or something and hang out. But um, yeah, I think in the hub, it'll be a bit different. I'll be out and about just trying to hang out with the girls and get close. To What's them. your um, music genre? Oh, your like favorite? Drake. Love yeah, right. Drake. Bit of Kanye. Not too much Kanye. Bit Snoop of Drake. Snoop Dogg? No. A bit old school. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind a little bit. He actually did a podcast recently with um, Joe Rogan. Did he? It's hilarious. Yeah, right. He has podcasts. Yeah. yeah, right. No, a bit of, I love, I love a lot of rap. Um, I don't mind a bit of the stuff that's on the radio. I kind of get a bit sick of it every now and then, yeah. but a little bit of country sometimes, which yeah, yeah, is just between me and you. So. <laughs> well, he's all the listeners of the podcast now. Yeah, I know. All the listeners of the podcast. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know you love country. Yeah. yeah my favorite, yeah. Uh, my, um, my uh, country music comes from the Tiger King. Oh, yeah. I love Tiger King. Did you? I haven't I, watched it yet. I haven't seen it. Is it good? Are you serious? Yeah. I, I don't That's know. almost it as did. bad as you don't like coffee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't spark my interest at all. I don't know why. And everyone was talking. I think because everyone was talking about it. I don't know. I don't worry about I, I, I watched got Squid onto Games. It. I watched Squid Games, but no. I've watched that. Yeah, right. I That's, can't concentrate and watch. Read. We'll I can't do a trade. read subtitles and pay attention to You get to used to it. Take the subtitles off and you just, if you pay attention to everything else, it just it sounds like they're speaking English. So it's fine. 
Mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. So I actually funny. So I actually got onto the Tiger King before I actually became popular because I because I was oh, wow. here over here by myself. Yeah. Um. Before like the whole COVID thing anyway. So yeah. a lot of like Sunday evenings I'll probably sit down and, and binge watch stuff by myself anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up binge- number two. Tiger yeah, that's something you've seen that. it. Yeah, yeah it's, oh. it's more about the aftermath and the fallout of yeah, the whole okay. like Peter's gone on to yeah. seize up all the other properties and yeah. like yeah, just all different. Yeah. Not so much about Tiger King as well, all the other guys yeah. Um, yeah. around the scene mm. that like got in trouble mm. with this sort of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I got onto the Tiger King before the COVID actually outbreak came. So it was like a week later, the whole COVID thing was shut down. And then, yeah, and then when I got back, everyone onto was it. like onto it. And I was like, yeah, I wasn't. Already it. seen it, been there, done that. Been I there, done that, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, and I watched it again when everyone else was watching it because I'm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, right. There's something else I want to talk to you about. I completely forgot. That's all right. Take your time. Come on. It's all good. <laughs> No, because there was a thing I was um, talking about, like the homesickness too. I ended up getting a bit of that as well because yeah, right. ended up, so the COVID break, I ended up going back to Adelaide Yeah. because um, of work, obviously, footy and when mm. I was working that way, so all stopped, mm. obviously, went back mm. to Adelaide. Then when everything opened up, I came back. And the only reason I was able to come back because I had work, they yeah. gave exemptions because of work and yeah. I had a place to stay here. But yeah. None of my family, like we wouldn't get Casey, couldn't come back home. So she was originally still in Adelaide. Far out. Um, it was like a, a good eight months, I reckon, before I could get see like anyone, obviously my partner, like really? the biggest thing. Yeah. She didn't see Casey for that. So it was a, they were going to open it up in the start of like November. Yeah. But then Adelaide got like one case. So they shut yeah. the water again. Yeah. Yeah. So she wasn't able to move over until late January this year, late January, oh, yeah. January, early Jan. Yeah. Okay. But that's when we so, so originally right. originally I was meant to fly over to Adelaide, help her pack the car, and she was going to drive over. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that week we ended up getting one case here. Remember that time early Jan? I think it would have been yeah, yeah, just yeah. after we played Adelaide yeah, or something I think like so, that. Yeah, and everyone panicked. Yeah, everyone panicked, case. and yeah. SA closed the border to WA, so yeah. I couldn't fly to Adelaide and help. So she had to drive all the way over here by herself. No, with the dog, and no. lucky I didn't come because there was that much shit in her car. You really? I wouldn't have had a fit. Yeah. <laughs> I would have had to have like two or three things on my life and the dog would have had to be put in the back, like yeah. squished up in the, yeah. the back corner. <laughs> That's so but funny. I was stressed out too because when it happened, I was like, oh, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and get everyone, I try to move all of our accommodation on the way, move it all, move it all back. Yeah. Move it all back a couple of days. So if I flew over earlier, mm. I like I missed the border cut off. I could, yeah. we could all leave yeah. early and do this sort of stuff. So well, it's so, it's so, but it all, yeah, pick happened and match, quick. isn't it? Yeah. yeah that was, even, I would have gotten to the airport and that'd have been like, no, it's sharp. Like, oh, you fuck. Yeah, sucks. Mackenzie Derrick, that's just flown over, who I just brought up before, she left and then wanted to come back just before, I don't know what happened, and then got caught over here because there was some case with the borders and had to fly. She either had to fly back that day or if she mm. didn't, she'd have to go back and quarantine for two weeks. Yeah. So it's like she had to see her family and be like, hey, and then <sighs> sorry, like see you later, and then had to flew back. So yeah. she's back over there now. Um, but it's just, you know, I think... And a lot of people obviously now get to the point where it's like you just can't be like this forever. And that's, mm. you know, it's a lot of build up and frustration. And uh, yeah, it's what when I am, um, because when I had to come back, I had to yeah. do my quarantine, but I lived in a little apartment over in Frio. Yeah. So okay. it was all, all I could quarantine there by myself, all fine. But the yeah. coppers come to come check up on me. Yeah. Did they and they're come? like, they, yeah, they came. But the, this wow. is the funny story, right? They buzzed me and they're like, call, intercom me into my room, like, oh, you're there, mate. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, we need to come see you. I'm like, yeah, okay. I can't buzz you in from here. So, I have to come get come out and see you. Like, so, oh yeah, that's cool. And I'm like, so you want me to walk out? Yeah, well, you're not supposed to. But yeah. I'm supposed to. And they're like, yeah, it's so all good, mate. Hey. I legit had to like, you know, if I had COVID, I'll press all the buttons and this sort of yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. Get your germs everywhere. If yeah. you did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And they're like, oh yeah, cool. I have to sign some form or whatever. And they're like, yeah. here's your sheet. And you've got this fresh here, but here's your sheet. It's very. And I'm like, yeah. right. What's the difference? Like, you know, 100%. I just walked out. Why can't I just go? There's my car. Yeah. Can I drive it for like ten minutes yeah. to start it up and yeah. come back and like yeah. no. Nah. I'm like, well, no, even, do you want to come with me? Yeah, exactly. When COVID first started, that was happening with training with us. Yeah. We literally, because Melbourne, we're in lockdown. Mm. And obviously to keep the competition fair, we had to train like they were training. So there was like, uh, they put cones across the oval and we could not pass certain points on the, and we we would all like, and we had to like, we would do um, gameplay, like match them where we could tackle and everything. But then when we, we couldn't high five, we had to do elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you're yeah, slobbering yeah. all over each other and just anyway, like sweating yeah, all over yeah, each yeah. other. Oh, it's just, and that's what I mean. Like, they obviously try and do the best they can with what they have, but just like you're saying, like, it's the, it's very, 
you know, a lot of grey area in it all. Yeah. It's all for 100%. looks. percent i have just put it down to it's all just for looks. Like yeah. they're just doing well, it they're trying the, to, yeah. to keep everyone happy. Yeah. Like the yeah. 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 But I've learned you can't keep everyone happy. That's why you know, being Very a fitness so. coach at a, at a football club, you Very can't make so. it, you're always yeah. the the most hated person at the club. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, and when people start seeing results, then you start being, you know, No, they still don't no, they still don't like it. Really? Always push them hard. <laughs> yeah. There's always always something to push harder. Yeah, exactly. Do what's yeah. your um like your kind of biggest strength, like physical wise? You like the running conditioning, is that your yeah, kind of bread and butter? My thing I was talking to um one of my teammates about this last night at training, I guess because when I, before I started Eagles, I was inside mid, like I've always kind of grown up like that. And um, then when I came to West Coast, went out on the wing. And so for me at first, I was like, oh, I've never played anything before. I don't know what it is. I was kind of like, oh. And so that was a huge mental thing, just, you know, kind of that acceptance. And the last, uh, I guess the two years I've played, like I've really kind of stepped into the role and like I've, I've actually really loved it because for me, it's like I have, the harder I run, the more space I have, I guess. So um, that's kind of tied into, I guess, you know, one of, which I believe is one of my biggest strengths is just my endurance and probably my running and um, being able to, I guess, maintain, like I don't reckon I'm the quickest on the team, mm-hmm. but like I can maintain a high speed for a long time. I think it's probably my strength. So yeah. obviously works works quite well being out on the wing, um, doing a lot of defensive running, kind of cover off yeah. running and then being able to, once that's done, then sprint to the other side and try and have an impact, yeah. you know, and deliver to the forwards or something like that. Do you know off the top of your head your GPS, like metric, like what's your what's your total Ks in a game? Yeah, so we get high speed. Yeah, we get spread. We got sent. Um, we get tracked for every training at the moment, so we get sent through a GPS um, sheet at the. But yeah, um, grab your phone. Yeah, at the end of every. Yeah, at the end of every training, so we we'll get. Um, I'll show you. This is just, and this is what I find so cool and obviously a huge part that we're all, um, you know, so grateful just to have this kind of. Technology, yeah. Yeah, technology is just incredible. So like um, depends, it's usually Tuesdays Tuesdays and Saturdays, usually our bigger sessions. So like a Tuesday, I've just got one here. Um, Tuesday, 2nd of November, which was ages ago, I was sitting at like 8Ks. That's for the session. Oh, wow. Um, then you've got your sprint distance, so six, 763 yeah. Um, acceleration load 2,119. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what half of this means. Um, and then, yeah, top speed was 28.5 for that. Holy so that's, that's just for one session. So you don't consider yourself the fastest there by 28 nah. k's? I don't reckon. Like, Neve Kelly is so quick. Mm, that's hard. She's fun. so quick. So Neve Kelly and Grace Kelly, they're so quick. Belinda Smith, she's so quick. Um, but, yeah, so I think my strength is obviously just being able to maintain it for um, for a longer period of time. So. Which is good. That's right. Yeah, more what's endurance. Your, what's your two K time? We do. I haven't done two K for a while. We do. We now do two times one K. Yeah, I've heard they that. think it's more suitable for women's footy. Um, why? Because it's. Why? Well, do you know why? I think because I don't know. I think because it's more. You don't ever do that two K running in a game. You don't ever do a consistent. So they're trying to make it more match like. So they're like, I guess with a one K effort is kind of like testing your max speed for a longer but not inju- not pushing into your endurance so yeah. it's not like i don't know i don't i'm not actually sure it'd be interesting yeah, that, to find out yeah i'll, I'll get someone on to do, have a discussion about that please yeah you could probably get yeah because i got i've on the probably phone, just yeah. said that i'm gonna have i've got no, five questions cool. right now yeah 100 percent. um but yeah so we just did we did um time trials the other day i think my from memory in state i think my best is like seven 20, 720 something. Hmm. Uh, it's my best 2K. And then the 1Ks we did. Still better than mine. That's okay. <laughs> the, the 1Ks we did, um, yeah, sitting around a three. Oh, I don't remember. The 1K the works. So you get eight minutes. So yeah. You, you get eight minutes to run the first one. And the faster you run it, the more rest you get. And then once that eight minutes comes around, then you run your second again. Um, I think the hardest part about that is just a lot of what the girls find is that, that you have that break to kind of. Be like, fuck, this is so hard. Fuck, I can't do this. Fuck, this is. And then, so I say it, and they came up and they were like, oh, how do you kind of just chill in that? And I'm like, the most, the biggest advantage you can give yourself is to try and just be numb in that. And then you go up to the line, because it's only in your your mind when you're running your first one, you're like two laps. It's not four laps. It's not, okay, we're going to get through four laps. Just two laps. Just two laps. And then when you come up for the second one, a lot of the, a lot of the mindset, I think, is that we've just done a 1K, now we're going to do another one. But like, if you can kind of mentally just, wipe it away for a second and be like, okay, just go do a 1K. Mm. I haven't just done one. I'm just going to do a 1K. That's so that's big, how you kind of That's repeat. interesting that you said that because mm. 
a lot of your energy that gets wasted from thinking like yeah you know there's oh, biggest yeah, things 100%. that especially yeah. what fighters say i'm oh, gonna bring it back because that's the sport that no, i relate to right. it's in a in a in a fight it's yeah there's so many things you got to think about like your opponent um count like especially like countering yeah um we got to look into a lot of different things you have to perceive but then at the end of the round you got coaches like blurting fear back back at you but yeah. the biggest thing is they always say calm your mind because that's drawing the energy away yeah. from like yeah. your fitness and all yeah. sort of stuff your nerves take yeah. away energy as well so that's the biggest thing that you said in that in that little window you have for a break is just to drop and let everything just calm the mind, get you breathing under control, yeah. and then just to and if you relax just and notice, then get think, your recovery. Yeah. Notice yeah. like, and obviously you don't want to become like I. I think this is probably one of the most challenging things I've tried to work through lately is just having because obviously on field I feel like I personally am quite like that's probably where my robotic side comes. It's just like that's when I can just kind of like kind of in a sense just focus on what needs to be focused on mm -hmm. something happens happens yep no worries get rid of it focus again whereas like i feel like mentally for me it's probably been a challenge off the field because like i'm you know i probably don't process my feelings as much as i need to or so it's kind of finding that when to do that and when not to and um you know that 1k is the exact example where i think it's probably one of my strengths just being able to um run the 1k process it um yeah, and just like you're saying, try not to overthink too much and just notice how your body's feeling. Like you don't have to overanalyze it and be like, yeah. fuck, my legs are sore, I'm lactic, it's so hot out here and now we're going to run another one. Mm -hmm. Like, And those thoughts, and it's not um, it's not me saying that I don't think that things. Like it's so natural to think those things and, and like I do think those things. It's like I was running the second lap of the first one and I was like, I okay. came into my head, it was like, fuck, it's like lactic. I was like, let's go, but it's kind mm -hmm. of like, okay. And then you just, as long as you can – like I do a lot of mindfulness at the club and I love that and it's kind of coming back to um, bring that onto the field and just being like, okay, I always say like when I'm running out in the wing, the first quarter is probably the hardest and then after that you just numb. It hurts so much. That you <laughs> so you just kind of run. <laughs> Mentally you just kind of run. Um, and yeah, afterwards, yeah, yeah. afterwards it's, yeah, I don't know. I've always kind of said that if you can kind of just process – what's going on in the most simple way and just acknowledge that it's happened as long as you acknowledge it and then kind of push through it, um, you know, especially in that moment. But mm. like I said to you, it's, it's different off the field. So I've been learning to find a balance, yeah, in terms of actually feeling what I'm feeling. So <laughs> That's funny you said yeah. that because oh, like, yeah. obviously doing the sparring, get hurt a lot. And then yeah. like in training, you suck it up and this is like, yeah. and I come home and I'm like, oh, my leg. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. morning we went for a walk and I'm like, my leg got a little bit yeah. chewed up because yeah. I got kicked a lot because yeah. I have a weird like boxing karate kind of side sort of stance yeah, okay. about having so black belt and karate so i do kind of wow. have a little bit of that kind of stance when i come to muay thai which muay yeah. thai is more um narrow and front on but i stay more right. side on and long so yeah. my leg is always out to get hit yeah, all the yeah, time yeah. so yeah but then at the start case and i were kind of walking at our same pace and i'm like oh my, my leg's sort of sore Cooking. like my feet my, i got a couple of broken toes that's going on and i'm like oh shit kind of guy she's like wow. don't complain to me yeah. either you go there and you know you do all this sort of stuff and you come back all you do is complain yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably that's probably healthy of you to do that though. Then that's what like that's ex exactly. I don't, what want, I'm you, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's full, full, full. Yeah, full well. We do these. We do that, these. You do these stupid things. Yeah, and then you come home and complain about it. Yeah, I fully understand that. Um, I don't want to hear about it. But yeah, so it's just. But yeah, you need to get that because if you keep that emotion in all the time, it then there's no up. outlet, right? And yeah. then you and then you come to a point where um you all of a sudden feel and something triggers you and it's like because you haven't felt what you've just gone through the last week or so, it's like everything from that week then comes back to what you've just been triggered on, which has nothing to do with that. But because you haven't processed how you felt then, it's just such a big, such a big, and that's probably what I'm going, yeah, that's probably what I'm working on at the moment. It's just being able yeah. to actually have something happen. And it's like, there's a difference between having something happen and letting it affect the rest of your day and having something happen and actually acknowledging it. What I used to do is just have it happen and be like, okay like everything's fine don't worry about it it's all good being being present right not yeah and, yeah, and yeah. not like and not actually acknowledge and validate kind of what i'm feeling so um yeah i guess it's just more about actually acknowledging it and being like yeah i am feeling this way for a certain reason not questioning it not overanalyzing it and then allowing myself to feel it and then move on with it rather mm. than just putting a band-aid over it and waiting for the ball to pop up from the water really that's all it is it's just a big bill yeah there, so i feel that, that that's really like an interesting way to think about it too because mm. i kind of have that similar something similar to especially when i when there's something like like i feel like anxiety or something it's exactly you know that, yeah. last thing i want to do is like kind of push it down i yeah. kind of just kind of stare at it yeah and then push through it yeah yeah 
which a lot of people kind of yeah. Because well, we don't talk about anxiety, this sort of stuff. A lot of people try not to feel it, and you need to be able to, mm. even if it's something that's uncomfortable. It's scary though, and yeah. it's unknown, and especially anxiety. I feel like, um, like I feel like we're progressing like nowadays where it's something that's actually more talked about especially in the olden days and especially like you know male dominators like yeah. you don't you don't feel anything as a male like that's just what it has been whereas nowadays it's kind of like hold on a second like everyone is human and that's exactly where I guess I come from with my mindset um and especially around the anxiety thing because the whole idea of of anxiety is like everything's just unknown so mm. even that feeling is unknown and so it's like it just turns into this panic and like unless and that's why when it comes, you just breathe and you actually try and be in, yeah, I guess you're trying to sit with what you're actually feeling. And that's a hard thing to do. That's oh, yeah. a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Do you have, mm. I guess, like, do you journal? Do you kind of write it down or do you kind of have enough time to kind of think about it and process it and not so much write down? Yeah. Well, no, it's a good point. It's probably actually, it's changed a lot. Yeah. Um, I think being younger and like I said to you, I kind of created this own mindset of myself when I was younger. That wasn't necessarily 100% healthy because, like, I really struggled to actually let myself feel things because it was mm. like, no, nah, no, nah, you got shit to focus on. I was so focused. Um, so, yeah, I guess in that moment, the process probably in the last um, two years has been about, yeah, trying to work on that part. And, you know, that started on I tried to sit down and actually think about it and then I was like, oh. I was like, I still, I still feel like I just – I think because I was so set in my own ways that like if I didn't write it down, it wasn't I, – I couldn't quite validate it. So to answer your question, like the most um, – yeah, the most beneficial part, the way for me is probably actually to write it down. I'm quite a visual person. So it's yeah. like um, – it's more like I remember because I remember even when I was trying to go through the process of um, – thank you. When I was trying to go through the process of um, – yeah, working on that side of things, it was like I was overthinking it. So I'd feel something yeah. and be like, okay, I'm feeling this, which is the first part that I was trying to work on. I'm feeling this, great, no worries. But then it was like, why am I feeling this? Or why Why is this coming? Or where is it coming from? Or um, why is this happening so often? And then that would create panic and then create more and more and more. So um, I guess I've been kind of working on in terms of journal journaling, like if something happens, I'll just write down what I feel and be like, okay, this happened. Um, this happened with this and I honestly felt quite this and that's it. It's yeah. not dash because of this and this and this. It's not dash maybe it's because of it and it's not. It's trying to make it more simple, I think, um, mm. without overcomplicating it. So I find it really helps, really yeah. helps me because I can then validate yeah. and then come back to it and see patterns in it and be like, okay, I felt this way because of this um, instead of having everything explode um, based off something that's not even relevant to why I'm exploding. Mm. It's yeah. interesting that. Writing something down, there is something that connects deeper with someone, right? It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I did yeah. This, something similar like, uh, a couple of weeks ago where I was just like, we were down, not well, down, but I was a bit like mm. more kind of, kind of reflecting back when I was like real like early twenties and I was real like kind of driven yeah. towards the wing. I had certain goals, but nothing was like written down. But then kind of along the way, maybe through a lack of discipline or a lack of certain things, kind of wavered on that. And I was like sitting down, I was like, fuck, man. Like back when I was like twenty twenty one, I was had so many like goals. I had much more direction, I guess, mm. in where I want to do. And I guess like through life and different things around, you kind of lost mm. lost a little bit of that. And I'm just mm. like, fuck. So I wrote down kind of areas where I was like, okay, I need to have more discipline. Like I'm going to get up at like last kind of couple of months. Um, I was trying to, lacking in my training. I lost the way of training a bit. So I was like, because the excuse was time. Hard, so I was like, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. So I was like getting up, get up at 4 a.m. every day of the week. There's yeah. no excuses then. There's no one in the gym who's going to, piss you off or whatever yeah. so get up four o'clock do your gym then that kind of frees up my afternoon right so then i can go and, and have my time to do my work during that time where yeah. i would used to go to do the gym in that time and yeah. then try to get work around everywhere Everything else so done. yeah that sort of stuff and then i was like one podcast a week and then what else i have down two runs a week so this yeah. sort of stuff and then yeah, yeah, yeah just try to run down have um, then i was like had a little fitness goals and make sure i got to muay thai three times a week and yeah have some stuff down so then i was like okay in a week, I need to hit this sort of stuff. If I hit it off, that's good. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'd kind of and if I don't hit it off for whatever reason, that's okay because and that's the biggest gonna, part. Is that it's okay not yeah, to? Yeah. And that's I think that my biggest thing is like you're so and even for yourself, like you're so driven and you're ticking off all these boxes. But like if you don't, it's fine because yeah, you're yeah, human. Yeah. That's, yeah, 
That's because it was uh, yeah. Wednesday night. Usually, is like kind of Wednesday's busy because it's work, mm. and then straight after is footy, and we do have our weight session. So three blocks, three to four, four to five, five to six, and then six forty-five is six, yeah, six forty-five start of more time, mm. and then sometimes and after six o'clock yeah. in that forty-five minute window, it gets hard to kind of go. Yeah. and I was jacked. I was so tired. Like yeah. I had more tired the night before. <laughs> get up early to go to gym in the Wednesday morning. I was just kind of tired, a little bit, but kind of here a mm. bit nasally, mm. and then I went home. We came. I came back. So I'm going to go to the gym. I went to go to Muay Thai. We call it gym because it's all gym. But I went to <laughs> went to Muay Thai. I did go to Muay Thai. So I went down, laid on the couch, and Casey was cooking dinner. Fell asleep wow. straight away. And she's like, "Dinner's ready." I'm like, "Yeah." And I was wow. like, "Oh shit." Yeah. And then we went back, and then I reckon we went to bed by nine o'clock. And then I woke up on Thursday morning at four o'clock, and I went. I sat up, and I remember looking at my like. I went looked down at my shoes, and I was like, oh, "Fuck this!" Took my clothes off, went back to bed. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I was so tired. But it's all right, though, right? Because then self rest, yeah. Yeah, because then Thursday I didn't even do gym Thursday, but then Friday back to gym. Yeah. Um, did more tough Friday, and yeah. then Saturday. And did sometimes the same you thing. need that, like you yeah. need that little. Had a bit, had a bit rest. To, yeah, exactly. And I think it's really interesting what you brought up before. Is that like the way? And I really related to it when you were saying it. Is that like you were sitting there in that moment, and you were like, when you were twenty, things used to be this way, it used to be that way, it used to be this way. Like everything was better when you were twenty kind mm. of thing and I feel like that's sometimes the mindset I get in is it like oh you know like I always I'm kind of sitting here with like rose-colored glasses on just thinking that like everything was always better than it is now and um I guess yeah just kind of being real and the fact that like the process that you're actually or the progress sorry that you're actually making and like the fact that you can actually now sit down and have a rest day and be like yeah I'm cool with that mm. like no worries I'm cool with that and I guess that's kind of a bit of a journey I've been on as well but yeah I thought it was really cool you brought that up. Yeah. Mm. I feel like not that so much. I feel like I lost a lot of discipline along the way. Mm. And I just kind of listened to certain people and just being like, you know, I, kind of, I think I lost the path. Like along the way, I kind of yeah. got on a different path. Not that it's a wrong path, but I feel like yeah. I need to kind of get back to a way to have a bit more direction in what I'm mm. doing, yeah. that sort of stuff. So I did that sort of stuff. And then I have a, it's not all just training. I do have like recovery things in there as well. Like, yeah, of course. Make sure 12 minutes of ice bath, like recent yeah. saying 12 minutes of ice bath a week it, yeah. is enough to kind of stimulate um, adaptation to for recovery. Yeah. And same with sauna too. So, like, over an hour of sauna a week yeah. to, to increase heat shock proteins and that sort of stuff too. So, I do that. And then, like, my Wednesdays where it's, I don't really do like a weight session. It's more like I do 30 minutes of cardio and then stretch and yeah. ice bath. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm usually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So do you do, do knock on ice baths? Yeah. Like, so yeah. we, yeah, after every training, yeah. um, like we gym Monday, train Tuesday, Wednesday's usually off, which is nice. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so on and so forth throughout the week, but usually training. So Tuesday, Thursday um, and Saturday, we will jump straight in the ice baths, 12 minutes um, at the least. And then we have this little chart. It's actually really cool. Um, the facilities are just incredible, but this little chart, it's so simple, but so helpful. Um, just based on like the amount of training that you're doing. So like oh. it says, it's like you're sore, you're, um, you're fatigued, whatever, or you're cooked. Like it's got like a yep. green, Colour, yellow, yeah. red. Um, and it obviously says like, if you just like a light training, you can, you know, stay in for 10 minutes or whatever, or, and it kind of just, until you get to gameplay down the bottom, like you're cooked, exhausted gameplay, you're in there for like 15 minutes, hot and cold, whatever. Mm. Um, so it kind of gives you a bit of a... Oh, so you have a hot bath as well? Yeah. We have a hot bath, yeah. Just, yeah, to adding on to the facilities, like you've got the hot bath there, two ice baths, the big pool yeah. next door. So it's... Yeah, it's do you say you contrast or you I, mainly ice? I personally ice. Um, mm. My my back's been like what I've seen to you before. Like there was one session that pulled up quite sore, so I just went in the heat just to try not okay. to try, loosen it up a little bit and um, keep it nice and warm. But... I personally find most benefit out of the cold, but that's yeah. just me. Some some of the I don't girls mind the challenge of a nice bath. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And how long? How long do you stay? Twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you go? Do you go all the way up to your neck, or do you kind of let your arms? I go try up? to. Yeah. I like. It's probably the hardest part. Like some of the girls, Swanee's nuts. Swanee's gone to a different level. Emma Swanson, the captain this year, is just like. Which she's head under, she's so fit, but every, she's challenging herself that every ice bath she just jumps in, like there jumps in head first. Oh, head first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then gets up and then just stays there and, then just, yeah, and well, tries to breathe through it. So that's yeah. just something she's and you know. Yeah, I dunk. So we got a little tub, sort of like a little like a circle tub thing. Yeah. So I just dunk in, yeah. head under straight away, and then lift it up. And yeah. then just kind of, oh, sit I have to have something. Through it. Yeah. Do you do do you play music or anything, or do you kind we of? We have there's like two TVs in there that usually have yeah, the NBA okay, yeah. or something yeah. on, so we usually something. watch that. Or need or something we just, just to disassociate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's big there's Bluetooth speakers on the roof, so sometimes there's one time it was so funny. I think Hooks connected to the Bluetooth, put some music on it, which is like ah, dancing, yeah, which is good. Like actual 
moving through your recovery because sometimes yeah, we got told off at one point just for like standing there. All oh, right. Because you obviously build up this big heat layer. Yes, around yes, you around you. Yes, there. and that's why I feel better. So yeah. And so you can't like sit there and you're smiling because it's getting a bit nicer. And then, yeah. Um, you know, they were just, they weren't yelling, but they were just like, just make sure you, you're moving mm-hmm. around, even getting some, not as much mobility, but um, just it's breaking good. that layer around you. That's so true. Yeah. Because yeah, you were sitting there, there after a while, like, oh, this is getting too I'm easy. I'm getting good at this. And then, and then like, yeah. you can kind of move around, like, oh, yeah, it's still cold. Yeah. It's still cold there. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So. Yeah, you have to dissociate because I, I sometimes I might just play a little video. I might just watch some fights or oh, something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll just focus on something One else. time, though, I did went after, I went after Muay Thai. And then, like I said, I got a couple, like, of dodgy toes that's going on. Yeah, wow. And on the way I out, I remember just Broken like toes that would hurt no oh, it hurts yeah, yeah. But yeah it goes numb right so on the way out because it's numb I didn't really realize where my feet and my toes were and I knocked my toe like on the edge of the bath like this and I remember just going fuck like yeah like, yeah, this, yeah yeah the most pa- like oh my god just after an book now before I was getting punched in the face yeah. no worries yeah. and like a little knock on my toe I was just like excruciating me out of yeah. pain because it was cold yeah and then it was like stiff and then it was like partly and broken cooked, too yeah. and then I just knocked on it I was like oh my god I okay. wear um socks in the ice bath have you ever heard of that before no that's I will train why why do you wear socks in the ice because bath because I can't I cannot go on the ice bath with my toes they we defeat the purpose though. hurt no it doesn't they hurt like they kill. And there was myself just like and it, so Brianna Green tight. that came in here yeah. with you before. She used to wear these little booties, like little, <laughs> like you know what you do to go, me to at go all. on coral reefs and stuff like. Really yeah, shoes. yeah, yeah. She wore those with like little straps, and obviously Fuck, they funny. were like little socks. Um, but I just wear my training socks in there because mm. otherwise my toes they kill. Yeah, yeah. What do you Dude, mean defeats the purpose oh, of my feet? Yeah, because it keeps them warm, does it? Yeah, warmer. But- Oh, I'm cold. Yeah. <laughs> so cold. Dude, she, I, I love uh, Greenie. She's you know what her kidding. music, um, she loves like opera music in the yeah. gym. Yeah, I don't yeah, mind yeah. that. Yeah. I only round it really? every time. So sometimes like when she used to play at East Rio, yeah. uh, we might just cross paths every now and again and she would go to change her music. I'd be like, no, mate, leave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sometimes yeah. it'd be like some Star Wars, like, you know, some really good. Um, <laughs> How random, mate. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. sick. Do you ever um, play around with um, with uh, saunas? At all? I haven't It'd yet. Be interesting because no, I haven't yet. Yeah. Interesting to kind of get used to it because oh, you play obviously play in the summer mm, mm. and you get how your body you get adapts a, to it. Acclimatized to the heat. Yeah. And how if there's a difference you notice yeah. when you do play out in the heat? Yeah. Yeah. No, it'd be definitely definitely be interesting, and that's like I guess for us WA teams, like one of uh, we feel as heat, yeah. yeah, is it like having Melbourne teams come over here? It's obviously an advantage for us because like we train in like stupid heat, like Saturday morning sessions are. Across Frio, across Frio and West Coast, it's just known Saturday mornings are always. You start at, you get to the club at like seven, probably don't finish till just before, you know, lunchtime and when it's peak heat and we were doing match sim yesterday. So, um, yeah, you're cooking. But I definitely look into it. I haven't, it's not something I've tapped into yet. But Yeah, because yeah, you get um, heat shock proteins which are, and then you obviously get a climatise of the heat. So yeah. we're wondering might, if it makes a difference to yeah, your body. Your, Oh, like RPEs and yeah, and like it, it's interesting. It might be like a a thing that you can track on like a GPS. Like you might be able to put out yeah. more meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout training and, and like how long? Maybe after. interesting how long you'd have to acclimatize before you see. Because I know that that's what um, I had a few of the hockey hockey roos and the um, hockey guys in as well. That when they before they went to Tokyo, they did yeah. two week of heat acclimatization up in Darwin to like because yeah, okay. of the humidity and the heat. It was very Tokyo? very. Yeah, 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 very similar. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah. like, no, no. So what they said to Darwin, the difference between Darwin and Tokyo was like the difference between living here and going up to Darwin. Like they did yeah, okay. extreme. Yeah, so they yeah, reckon, yeah. Yeah. like, they reckon they were glad that they did in Darwin, but like, there's a massive, in, like, increase for for the feeling of being in Darwin to be yeah. in Tokyo. Yeah, humidity and the heat. They reckon it was, they were playing even at night was like even more humid than it was during the day. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so they did a two week kind of camp um, up there to get acclimatized before they went. To Tokyo, but they did um, a couple of months before that. Did like a trial period, so they went up there, yeah. did a whole bunch of testing. So good. Um, yeah. They did like the slushy thing before. Yeah. Um, training to like cool right. down the body temp yeah. and that sort of we stuff. We do too. that. We do that after trial, mid mid and after training, especially on Saturdays, just to yeah, try and yeah. cool everything down. But I just think it's so cool to you know even see like what you're saying. You got saunas. You've got everything now. That's like all the little, th- and that's what it comes down to. Especially when you get to the point where it's like athletes are competing for like. Well, in you know swimming and stuff, seconds in oh, in yeah, oh, you know milliseconds even. So um, they're just tiny little edges that can just mm. change everything. So do you have a open. do you have a sport outside of footy that you like to kind of watch or kind of get behind? I love watching basketball. I love watching yeah. the men's NBA. I think I just I don't know why I'm just so involved with it, but um, 
really whack. I love motocross. I love yeah, right, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Dirt bikes. I, I'm not really like I probably couldn't name many motocross riders, but like anything to do with it. Like I've always, if I didn't play footy, I reckon I'd have like a few two fifties, a few little fifties <laughs> to back around. I just love it. I don't know why. Buzzing um, down the street. Yeah, <laughs> buzzing around. I don't know, but I've obviously it's something I just chose to kind of sacrifice a footy, and it's just not ideal. It's this is my mum of myself saying to. You know, my adult self saying, you know, just to leave it till after footy. But, um, yeah, pretty much a bit of basketball I'd love to watch or any. Like if I – KO is probably my favourite. <laughs> yeah. I could watch anything. I love watching it. I watch a bit of boxing. I watch women's, men's, anything. Mm. Anything, yeah. So I love Do you get behind fighting or not? Do I you? haven't actually – I love fighting. I love it. I haven't – but like it's same thing, boxing, same yeah. thing with – I'd love to do it. I would love to do it. Same thing with um, motocross. Like I probably couldn't name – Many of them, mm. but like if it was on, I'd be. You get behind off season, you could do oh, even to. if it's just like conditioning boxing. Yeah, like, yeah, you don't yeah. have to do, have don't to, have to do sparring. I have to or hit anything, you up, but... Maddie. I have to hit, hit you up, get in a few sessions in. No, you don't want to be, don't want to learn, <laughs> don't want to learn anything off me. I'm yeah. more, it's more like I'd be that coach who's like, do what I say, not what I do. Yeah, like, I'm okay. more unconventional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of the Muay Thai because I like when I wish when I first started Muay Thai, I used to wear like the headband and shit like that. Yeah, right. Just because yeah. I used to like, this used to sweat real bad. Like, because I'm not really acclimatized to heat, I hate the heat. Yeah, I used right. to sweat so much. I used yeah. to get in my eyes all the time. I used yeah. to hate it because I never used to be able to see. So yeah. I used to wear this headband. And then when like the owner of the gym, he has two gyms and you usually spend some time at the other one and spends, yeah. and the other coaches spend time at ours. Yeah. And he came up, we did like an intercub type of thing and he saw me and goes, He's like, get the fucking do rag off your head, and I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he's yeah. only joking, but like, yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, I used to muck around. I wear like uh, leopard print shorts because all the ties like hell, like traditional, like to have these like special tie shorts that are yeah. all like hell big and like puffy. I'm puffy, like, that's yeah. your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wear yeah. like the MMA shorts and have where the leopard print, and everyone like gives me a hard time yeah. wearing leopard print shorts. I'm like, mate, it's all about the fun. <laughs> yeah, you I was like, having fun. And so I wear good. like um like long sleeve rash guards too. Yeah, was, actually yeah. one of the things I really don't like is um. But getting like mad sweat on like everywhere, like because especially in, in in Muay Thai, it's a lot of clinching. So I was like stand up wrestling. Okay. And you're getting yeah. all other people's bo and shit all over. All over, yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> especially in a COVID world. Yeah. At the moment, like I was talking about what we were saying before about like stuff doing like anxiety and stuff. The yeah. biggest thing that I've kind of over the last year is like doing stuff that like challenges you. It's probably the biggest thing. Mm. And you said mm. earlier, um, we we're talking about um, the House Swans were such a, a big team coming into that into that game against East Frio. And you yeah. said that you want to kind of keep that beginner mentality, same yeah. deal, like being uncomfortable, having that like white belt mentality, always yeah. like learning and putting yourself in situations that are hard to get through and it like, works out towards an, like, a better end because you always, I think as humans, we're, there's a part of us that still has that biology of when we were like in, in the caves, living yeah. in the caves, living yeah. in tribes where it was so hard mm. to live in. Survival mode. Yeah, yeah it was sort of like yeah. living in survival and, those rewards is what made us keep doing that. Like yeah. it was super, super hard to go out yeah, on hunts and to, to yeah. and gather a hunt together a lifestyle was so mm. hard, but it was the re- reward of doing those hard things. Yeah. And then the pleasure was sitting around your family and having yeah, you know, like exactly. cooking up a big fee, big feast yeah. to, to for the tribe, you know. Mm. I think it's really interesting because like just what you said then about the whole anxiety thing and challenging yourself and half the time I think the biggest thing is is that that like the exact moments that like you're like I do not want to do this is probably the time that you need to oh yeah or probably the time that you're going to feel the most or get the most growth out of and sometimes it's really hard and I feel and I felt it myself and I like I always want to reach out to people that are feeling this way is it like you I guess with anxiety and with mental health or whatever is that like you can sometimes feel like everything's just dark and everything's just and so it's like I don't know, you get into a bit of a cycle of that, like you don't want it. Like why would you challenge yourself or why mm. would you? And you I don't know, it's, it's a mix between wanting to look after yourself because you're not feeling 100%, you're not. And then as soon as something switches and it's like, okay, you get some sort of hope and sometimes that is exactly what like I would love this to be. It's just some yeah. sort of something, like even if it's little, some sort of something just for someone to be like, okay, and it can have such a huge impact even if it's so small. Um it's just starting something again or starting something again or doing something that you think you probably couldn't because then that's when the anxiety gets mixed with self-belief again and you start getting confidence back and you start and it starts to mm. like – and so you just I, – I personally feel you just get on this cycle of, um, I don't know, just kind of getting back in touch with yourself and it is yeah. hard because like when you're feeling like that, you don't want to – I don't want to challenge myself when I'm trying to like when I don't even feel like I – you know. 
you don't you kind of you kind of lose a bit of um a bit of sight of yourself and um yeah like I said it's probably the one time that you actually you're gonna get the most growth out of it so yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting yeah I think yeah that you said they mm. being too comfortable I think that's definitely what I mm. kind of got used to being too comfortable and that's probably the big biggest mm. thing now saying I say saying to myself when I get before I am I'm gonna earn earn the sunrise and yeah. That's just to give myself. Because you take it, otherwise yeah. it's just like the sun's rising every day and it's going down at night, and yeah. then you wake up and you. But like, and that's what I mean. It's all it's all different to the person. Some people, like I remember having friends at school that, and some people love to just wake up in the morning when they wake up and just go through their day, and that's more than fine. Like, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely different mindsets and different um, mentalities, and um, I guess I always, you know, you just got to come back to yourself and what's yeah. important to you and. And I think at the moment, like sometimes it's just taking away that judgment of how people live. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's yeah. hard because it's like, I, I want to get, get up at five. Like, why don't you want to get up at five? Yes. It's just people. So it's kind of, and then you end up, that's why like at the moment I've just been off my socials completely. Mm, oh, that's so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, I love being with my friends and the Facebook birthdays. Oh my God. I wish that was just something it was because like, I don't remember anyone's <laughs> birthday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But, yeah, so I'm actually like I delete the apps off my phone because it's like you kind of get to a point where um, and even if you're working on yourself, it's like you're always comparing yourself to what someone else is putting their best self out on social media. And it's never – it's like sometimes it's, you know, people doing it on purpose, but half the time it's just people trying to enjoy social media, um, and, you know, and put their best foot forward. But, it, mm. like, it's so funny how it subconsciously just puts such a weight on your shoulders, I personally feel. Um, and so – it's not even just that. It's more just like I found myself just craving to be on it and I was like, oh, and worrying about what people were thinking and worrying about what I'm going to do if I didn't have my phone. Like how's yeah. that living? I yeah, don't know. Nah, it's no good. No way to live. And it's crazy. Yeah. Um, a few things used to uh, go back to like how society has changed so much. Like yeah. away back in society, we talk about, we talk about like, you know, hunt together a lot sort of lifestyle when yeah. – our biology hasn't changed from then. Like we still have arms, legs, hearts yeah. and this sort of stuff. But society from then has changed so much, you know. Even we can go back to when like my grandparents, how they kind of came over here on a boat from Italy, you know. They kind of just it's there was no technology. Right? They just came yeah. straight over here. And that's yeah. really early 1900, like 19, 1930, 1940, I think they mm. came over, right. So mm. in the space of 70, 80 years, we've no, they've got technology. That's like so and it's, Nana yeah. tells me these stories how she used to live up in this village and this, she used to make the beds and do all yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then, but she's now leaving with, like her grandchildren have like phones and like oh, their face. That's just simple and, stuff, and that's you know? so nice to have a grasp on. Like as your Nana is like, yeah. she would make, and it's it's so physical and whereas now like like you were just saying, like her grandkids and my little sister, she's mm. just turned nine. And like she's got an iPad and she's like on TikTok and she's on. I've never wanted TikTok. Like, like Grace is just like, and I, I think she's the most beautiful soul. But it's just interesting to see. And she's like, I grew up with my full brother. Yeah. Um, we're only a year and a half, but she's obviously there's twelve years difference between me and my sister. And she's my half sister. Oh, wow. So it's kind of like she's not growing out without growing up without siblings. But it's like I had Jack there all the time. Yes. And I wanted to go play out in the bush. And I don't, I don't care about what was on my phone. Yeah. But it's like it's kind of she has so much time to. And she has such an interest on it because all her friends are doing it mm. and no one really knows any different. So, um, like, if anything, that's the one thing that I'd, like, I'd love for Grace to kind of, I have, I wouldn't, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because I'd never want to be like, mate, like, don't be on your phone. Like, it's yeah. just like, as long as you know, as long as it's like, I just, as long as Grace knows that, like, there's a life without the internet and there's a life without, mm. and that half the stuff on there is just. Right fake anyway yeah. um you know she can Some do what real, she likes yeah. and yeah i just want to i guess be there for her um i think i think yeah it's benefiting us in so many ways in terms of a positive like this wouldn't be possible without it mm. um you know no, that's true yeah yeah exactly that and you can you can spread positivity and spread like growth and um so and so at the moment like my feed if i log on to instagram is probably just my closest mates few footy clubs few nba teams and yeah. a lot of it's just self-love like yeah. growth, everything. Like I've, I actually went through, and I was just like, I, I don't have time for that, 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 that. Just unfollow yeah. it, you know. Mm, so you point. either go, you go through a process where you unfollow what's not beneficial, or then you log out of Instagram, or you just delete it, yeah. and delete it. Like Snapchat, yeah. what is what is Snapchat? Yeah, no, it's fake. That's all crap. Like it's good to keep in touch <clears> with people, hundred percent. But like if you you keep in touch with the people that like are real for you, and you, they, yeah, like even Mickey Hyde, like I. 
she's probably one of my best mates and it's been really hard to catch up with her but like it always somehow mm. happens so like yeah 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 for sure you always you make know. time yeah where I was going like the society mm. I feel like we've become it's all about centered around comfort and mm. we always get to like it's very easy to get in a comfort zone and just mm. do things that make us feel Everything's comfortable. So simple now. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Where I was like back when, like you know, a grand, my grandparents had to move over. It was not yeah. comfortable to kind of move. I had no choice but to leave. And yeah. you know, yeah. one one came over eight months earlier, and then had to work over here, and then pay for another to come mm. over. And mm. that was a comfortable to kind of live in. And I feel, and even go back, take that back further. And the tribes, you know, there'd be times where they'd be unsuccessful in their hunts and they have to go starve. And yeah, there'd be times where it was not yeah. easy to kind of live off the land and do mm. that sort of stuff. And where I'm going is like. When we do things now when in a society that's comfortable, when we do things that's that's hard work, like mm. training is mm. hard, doing mm. lots of different things that make us uncomfortable yeah. and we kind of sit back and we go, we have this realisation that it's all like not real. Like yeah. we can kind of, I can sit back after a hard day of training and, and do this sort of stuff and realise that stress from work, yeah. I can kind of deal with it yeah. at, a, at a pace that's easy. Like yeah. not that it's easy, that yeah. it makes it more easy to handle it's like a pressure cooker at yeah the moment, like exactly what you're I saying feel, yeah i feel like you know go through 30 45 minutes of the sauna i'm like dying i'm like really want to push through it like five more minutes like and, and then five more minutes and so there's five more minutes it? yeah and then i go yeah. out of that i'm i calm down i'm relaxed have my cold shower whatever after and yeah. then walk through and then i'm in my head i'm processing like what's what i need what's the next thing i have to go do i have to go go home write up a program and yeah even if you know, I only have a couple of hours. It's like, okay, I can kind of get out a couple of programs in that time. Yeah. It's all right. It's and not like it's not like you're you're comfortable your whole day and then it's, you get to your program and you're like, fuck, yeah. like that's your challenge. Yes. So it's like you you push yourself a little bit harder and – It puts everything into perspective. Into perspective. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm. And then there's another yeah. thing you said as well that I'm going to touch on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, there was that, and it came to me just before as well. But, yeah, I feel like once you kind of get through a struggle period and it's easier to kind of get it out, get it out. Yeah. It puts everything, it makes everything seem easier. Mm. Oh, and it, there we go. Um, <laughs> you were talking about um, how, you you know, you can get up early and but then you kind of judge people who don't like to get up early and they can kind of get through the day and it's fine to think that. But mm. I always just, I had the same issue as well. Like people don't seem to work as hard or put in the effort or like don't seem to like gym as much mm. because I have this kind of fear and anxiety in myself that I can't deal with it. Like if I don't, if I miss out on the gym, I get real down and beat up on myself. If I don't get up at four o'clock in the morning and put in mm. my best effort, I get mm. down and beat up on myself. And I don't want to see that in myself, and that's why I don't mm. like it on other people. Yeah, but that's it's real like, weird. That's so real of you to say that. Yeah. Because and like, but it's like, okay. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's like, and I think the biggest thing as well, like just on what you just said, then is that like that is exactly what you're feeling. And I guess for me, it's like everyone feels that, and I f I fully relate to what you just said. It's kind of like okay, it's a bit of like a I don't know. It's kind of like well, I'm putting in this work. Like why aren't you? Mm. And it's it's kind of like you yeah. have to sit yourself back and be like, well, maybe Michaela, they don't they don't want to, and that's yeah, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like I think my biggest thing for me in in that topic is like I don't want to, and I do. It's natural. Everyone, every human does it, but like I don't want to judge person a on what like on what i'm doing because it's and that i feel that's what social media does is it like coming back onto the topic of it is it like i i like because i'm looking at what they're doing i'm i'm not inspired going like fucking this this and this and this i'm not trying to put myself in a you know a, a hierarchy or anything but it's like i don't want to and so i feel like social media brings that out of me in a way that like i don't want to judge i don't want to judge anyone like i would i would like if someone wants to live, they want to live, then that's their decision. Mm. And as long as, you know, they're happy and doing what they want, they don't have to get up at five o'clock if I want to get up at five o'clock. That's just – and once you start to realise that, you start to actually put like bit like value on that, I, that I'm that i waking up at 5 a.m. That's it. That's full stop. I'm waking up at 5 a.m. It doesn't fucking matter what anyone else is doing. Mm. It doesn't matter what anyone else yeah, is doing. Yeah, and so yeah. like, yeah, and um, I feel like then you – the whole idea of like – you know, nailing yourself so hard and being so hard on yourself kind of like because half the time you're so hard on yourself because you feel like you're not doing enough. But like enough is like the idea of enough is what everyone else is doing. And so if you don't worry about what everyone else yeah. is doing, you kind of come back to yourself and you're like, well, I'm content in what and like I'm doing what I'm doing for me and that's like that's enough. Yeah. I don't want to judge yeah. people. I don't want to. Oh, yeah, like, it gets hard when you – again, I feel like again in this kind of society, in this like social media, this mm. sort of stuff, we always seem to, especially like Instagram and mm. – 
you always seem to it's always constantly at you what that person is doing or yeah. you know it's especially really, if you, it's literally yeah and you're like always trying to like, oh, what am i doing compared to that person but yeah. it's not about that it's yeah. more about where you are where you're going that's exactly what you brought up at the start about afl players and like athletes that if you didn't like if social media wasn't a thing and there wasn't so much media broadcasting and whatever and you didn't see like the pretty side of athletes and whatever and you kind of just met them some athletes you'd meet and be like, you're a prick. Other athletes you'd meet as people, like take the athletes out of it. Other people you'd meet and be like, well, you're such a good guy or you're such a good chick or whatever because you're actually like you're seeing a whole side of them. You're not just seeing what they're choosing to post. or, um, And, yeah, it's nothing like it's nothing against what people are choosing to post. Like, And it's no dig at anyone. It's just, it's just reality about what social media is. I do it. I'm not going to post mm. it like, like I don't want to. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard because obviously social media is all about trying to post for other people and um, obviously there's a whole connection side of it as well and wanting to connect and wanting to fit in. I feel like social media is such a big thing is that like the more you post, the more you fit in with people, the more likes you get, the more the more you fit in. Mm. But like, you don't actually fit in when it comes to the yeah. – and then that's probably where the anxiety comes from is that you fit in so much on social media but then you – come into a, a like an environment where you're talking to people and it's like you don't have any I don't have any connection with you at all because like I don't know you yeah. I don't know who you are I don't know what you're like what you like and you don't like I just like I just know what you want me to know about you oh yeah. god <laughs> <laughs> how do you kind of go with I guess like doing the whole social media aspect for the business like do you yeah. find it like do you kind of because it's because again it's all about like engagement and trying to I have the battle the same battle it's like mm. you want to Make it successful. So you want to like put it out there, get lots of people to see it, blah, 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 do this sort of stuff. But then yet again, I struggle with the fact that I'm always on my phone. I'm always on my phone. Yeah. have to like organize all the all the photos, do this yeah. sort of stuff and yeah. posting. And, and I always get out like, fuck, let's take so much time away. And I'm like, yeah, and like sometimes it's m- more about it shouldn't really matter how many people I reach. It's just who who, who gets it. Like it doesn't yeah. – people are going to see it no matter if they – no matter – if I don't want to, yeah. like, you know, it's there. Yeah. They can come see it. There's ways, like, obviously, you can search you up on Instagram and mm. do mm. certain stuff. Do you kind of battle with that sort of aspect? Balance side of it. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's really cool you just brought up the fact that, like, um, the one thing I was going to say as soon as you said that is that for me, my personal view on it is that, um, like, the people that are there to be around will be around. And so mm. that's for me, it's like this isn't for everyone. This isn't for some like an older guy that doesn't believe in women's footy because of whatever. Like, and if, like, if he relates to it, he relates to it. But my, like, my vision is to, you know, like, I guess my whole purpose behind this is because I want to give back and I want to help and, like, I want to, I guess, pass my kind of message on. So, like, I don't worry. Like, I've, when I first started it up, I guess, you know, and mum owns her own kindy dance time thing and mum's all into boosting posts and putting ads out and yeah. doing a certain amount of posts a week and whatever and, um, you know, that's just her, that's her ride and whatever. But for me it's like I um, obviously like ideally, if it was an ideal world and I wasn't doing anything else, fuck, like I'd, I'd put more into it. Yeah. Um, But it's like for the moment I guess my mindset is that like if something's relevant and it can – help the or or give back to the audience that I'm aiming at then I'll do something about it so like if I see a, a, a quote or something that like resonates with me or that I hope could um spark someone else like then I'll do something about it or if I'm releasing something else but like for me it's not I won't sit down at the start of the week and be like fuck okay I've got to post this this this, this and this I've then got to do, I, I try not to make it stressful because then, then I feel like it just takes away I don't want I don't want to make this brand to be big. I want to make it have an impact. So right. that's kind of what that's it perfect. is, yeah. I guess. Um, I don't like. I don't want it. I don't really want to get to the point where it's all really cheap and really quick and cost effective. And I don't care how much money I make off it. I don't think. Or I don't care like about profits. I like. I appreciate it, obviously, but like I care about how people feel about it, and I care about like I guess the impact I'm having as a as a brand more than, um, you know, the social aspect of it. So that's probably why. Like I probably. Like if you were to look at my brand from a business thing, I probably should post more. Like mm. I, sh- I should to get more interaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I'm, I'm content at the moment with the people that are there. And I guess, um, you know, if I get feedback from those people, then of course. And yeah, exactly. I guess I just take it as it comes, really. Yeah. Yeah. Always. That's mm. yeah. That's definitely the one thing that I struggle with. 
with this yeah, podcast. Yeah, is different though as well though because like for me it's kind of um, yours is so personal and so like interactive and um, I feel like there's so much organisation behind it which like in your sense is you've got to stay on top of really in, in some sense whereas for me it's like I can kind of make my designs up in my own time and then send an email off and, and try and get them done up and, um, you know, kind of outsource as well and I guess just keep it a bit more chill because I've got stock. Like if someone wants to interact with me, the interaction is usually, um, you know, a purchase or something, a bit of feedback, a bit of conversation, mm -hmm. that's it. So yours is kind of like got to chat, organise a meeting, organise a this and this and this and this, have the chat, then edit, then, you know. Yeah, but so I find this easy. On. Do you? Mm. Well, exactly. And that's I find well, this, this easy because this is yeah. my passion. Yeah. Like this is like I yeah, – yeah, yeah. and I, if I had to make a brand on like – I can't even tell you. If I had to make a brand on like fiction books, I don't really, then I would struggle with that. Like mm. find that like, okay, fuck, I'm going to sit down and, um, you know, but for me it's kind of like I see something, I'm like, oh, like all this stuff up on your wall right now. Like I've been, oh, yeah. I've been <laughs> I've kind of reading been, it. I've been I've looking been at it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I love that. I love it so much. Which one do you like? For everyone who's not here, how's it been here? I've got the a little biggest, vision board. Yeah. The biggest writing that I can read is what we, don't do my we glasses. become what we think about. It's so yes. true. That is just, a, that is just, that screams at me. And I haven't even read half of, you know, I can read it here. Things you must learn how to handle, how to handle frustration, how to handle reject. Like it's so true. Everything's so true. And I think it's so real. And mm. I, I think my biggest passion is that it's, I want it to be talked about more and I want it to be. Yeah. So yeah, I'm passionate about it. And obviously you're passionate about this and talking to people yeah. and, you know, you're a natural speaker yourself. So like, oh, thank you. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I actually, um, <laughs> being a natural speaker, actually this is one of the things that was like probably one of the biggest like anxiety driven things I've had to, I've ever done. Like, especially. But exactly. This is like, this is socially like you've got to sit down with someone in a room that you really have no idea about, but they're going to come in and talk to you about. Yeah. And I don't do like questions. minimal, I do minimal research on yeah. everyone. So a lot of, and then people like, people like, so people said to me, oh, that's a bit disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, no, nah, not really. Cause I feel like it creates a what, power. the research thing? Yeah. 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 Like, just, I don't, I don't, like I don't really know a lot about yeah. people that come in other than the fact that I might follow them on social media. Yeah. But I don't want to create a power dynamic. So I don't really want to know too much about someone because then they, I feel like they wouldn't open up yeah. to me. Well, but I'm sitting I, there I going like, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. oh, you've done this and this and this. And they'd be like, oh, how'd you do that? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm invading on their, I would like, their personal I would, thing. The best podcast is, which is like, this has been wicked, but like, it's like, I want you to talk to me as a human. I like, oh, yeah. Without right. any background. Yeah. And this is why another thing, I think we said mm. this before about the whole like media aspect, how, especially in sports, how you kind of get after you might get a post game, uh, post game, like, press conference and it might yeah, be like interview or something, yeah. 30 seconds to a minute and it's yeah. like you have so much more to give as a person well, and as a player half the time and that's what exactly what the media does so like that is all and then the little kids watching that is like yeah exactly half the time we get briefed so it's like emma will run up to me the social media will run up after a game and be like hey bo it's like um seven wants to chat to you for a little bit they're going to talk about this this and this can you just touch on this this and this so it's not like yeah, not really. So I'm talking to you as Michaela Bow on my face, but my words are what media usually want to hear kind yeah. of thing. So, um, yeah, and then until you sit down with people and actually chat to them, and that's why, like, I love I love going to clinics and, um, you know, actually spending time with kids. And I would love I, – I want to feel reachable to people, I guess. Mm. Like, and it does – not in a way that it becomes tiring where you're giving too much, but, like, I just – half the time – you know, there's certain things that need to be said on mm. to the media, yeah, and certain, yeah, 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 certain, yeah, certain yeah, boxes yeah. that need to be ticked, really. So, yeah. well, that's yeah. kind of why I really like the the kind of fighter, the fighter kind of not lifestyle. I like the the uh, like MMA martial arts sports, yeah, um, because they are kind of individualized. Like yeah. they're not they're they're like independent contractors to to the company that they yeah, fight exactly. for, right? So they can yeah. say and do whatever they want outside and yeah. then they don't really get affected by no, what exactly. they do. So like a lot of them, I watch a lot of the MMA podcasts that Joe Rogan does. Yeah. Um, I watch a lot of other things and they're like, and like Conor McGregor is the biggest one. Like mm. how personal, like mm. how much you hope people know like what he's about, like he yeah. can promote himself and yeah. a lot of other fighters like, um, or he's an ex-fighter now, but Brendan Shaw, he does a lot of other podcasts, does, does two or three other podcasts and he talks mm. a lot about like his – anxiety as a fighter before he went to fight like you before he'd walk out to his fight he'd be like i want to fucking do this like yeah. all this sort of stuff and he was mm -hmm. again a heavyweight fighter and this sort of stuff but then 
going out and then learning about him outside of fighting is so cool. And yeah. that's probably the biggest thing why I wanted to start again, why I wanted to start a podcast yeah. is yeah. and why I'm so grateful for everyone who comes on and wants to share their story because I feel mm. like there's more to give. And yeah, I kind of didn't exactly realize, yeah. like, I'm, again, I'm so grateful for everyone who comes on, but the kind of first ones were like kind of people I worked with and yeah. had experiences coaching anyway. But the real big one was when I had Kelly Gibson on because I followed Kelly from when she was at Adelaide, yeah. Adelaide Pros, yeah. and I was like, fuck yeah. yeah. And then when I, when, when, I, yeah, when I first got into podcasting, I had this list of who I wanted and hers, her name was on there because mm. I was like, yeah, premiership player, yeah. you know, and the yeah. inaugural year, Huge. moved to Freya, and then went to West Coast, yeah. right? And then uh, I just sent her an email and then she's like, yeah, we would love to help you, like, you know, start the podcast and do this sort of stuff. And I was like eternally grateful for her to come on and mm. she actually dropped your name at, <laughs> in, the episode, in the episode eight she was yeah. on. So early days, I was yeah, on having episodes yeah, away was that. Yeah, she's now, boy, let's go. No, nah, she, oh, Gibbo is probably one of my closest mates at the club at the moment. Yeah. Um, she's super funny too. So funny, so down to earth and like, um, and I think she's someone that's quite real. So like I appreciate oh, yeah, yes. that she's real with yeah. me. And and not just she doesn't just tell me what I want to hear. She tells me what I need to hear sometimes, and and that's footy, and that's like, so like when, so she's exactly the kind of person that I told you about, with Juddy and Epps and Gemma Houghton and Gibbo was one of them that I used to sit there and be like, I think she coached. I played some state league, like one of your summer Swannies clinics. Yeah, it wasn't Swan Districts. It was like, and she oh, yeah. coached me with yeah. Courtney. Ewell. Oh wow! So she actually coached me. Um, she had her braces on at the time. I always give a shit about it, but she always gives me <laughs> shit because I was just, I look like an absolute lunatic. Um, but yeah, so she coached me then. And ever since then, like I've always looked up to her and I still do like today. And even though she's one of my closest mates, like um, I just, and I really appreciate how real she is, not even only with me, but with herself. And like, I know that she had a rough year last year at the club and, yeah, um, she that, yeah. you know, like, but she's honest about that. And I, like I appreciate yeah. that and I fully back her in for a comeback and oh, yeah. um, she's such a talented player, so skilled and, um, yeah, I really think she's been working on like her mental aspect a, a lot on the field and, um, yeah, she's such a she's such a good yeah. – I'm stoked she came on here. Yeah. Yeah. I was so super good. stoked to have her. She's so good. Yeah. Um, she came, she wore like a pink pink jumper and then she was kind of talking about how she's like super aggressive on the field. This, I knew she was. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I kind of said like I didn't really think that. Like, yeah. And she goes, oh, what, because I wear a pink jumper? I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, but she'll call you out on that. Yeah. That's that's the best thing about it. Like yeah. if you said that to me, I'd probably laugh it off. Yeah. be like, yeah. But like, Gibbo will actually say something about yeah. it. And that's what like it's good to have her. Like you feel like you're – I love having on. I love having her on my team. So it's like you run out and you just know she's there, kind of thing. Yeah, really cool, really good shape. Yeah, and there's actually yeah. a little quote that I would hear that oh, when I was talking about the struggle when being physical and how it helps you mentally. Yeah. I probably didn't come across that way, but what this actually came from Joe Rogan. He said, wow. "said there's a direct correlation between positive energy and positive results in the physical form." So if you get your mind right, it comes yeah. out physically. Exactly, that's exactly Ooh. what it is, and that's what I, I think. That's what when when you ask what kind of kickstarted my I guess um, curiosity in the mental thing. It's just I remember I used to watch these like videos of the mind and how powerful it can be. Um, I just think like like to control it is just like it's huge mm. because it's such a big – I watched a movie the other day about like brain capacity and it said something about like how – as humans, like we don't actually have that much control over your mental and brain capacity. So like like mindfulness and obviously meditation is something that kind of I think it expands it, but not by much, only by a few percent. I think dolphins have like the Yeah, wow highest, and dolphins, yeah. Highest like control of their brain or something. But yeah, I just find it so I find it really interesting that like there's so much going on in here, even though and it just gets overlooked so often. Mm. I think that's why as well. I was you know David Goggins? Mm, yeah, rings a bell rings yeah, a bell I don't, one of the, can't put a name to a face um, he came out of this book oh, You Can't Hurt Me it's called and he's, okay. he went through all these like, struggles like, being a black guy going yeah, through right. buds he went through real bad like mental health yeah. he got like, abused a lot when he was a child by his dad it, this whole crazy stuff and then for people who would have known we spoke about this before on the podcast but he went this mm. did this wild uh, challenge he had to do run a you know, 24 hour race to qualify um, for this other race he wanted to do to raise awareness for um, for victims in uh, coming out of the military. He was a ex-Marine. Wow. Uh, no, Marine. He was a other one, Marine. And then there's the – oh, it's going to come to me. Air Force. The Air Force, Marine. And there's the – I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it now. I forgot. Fuck. 
anyway, you're raising money for like... somewhere in, involved, yeah. Yeah. Like the real top ones. Seals. There we go. Uh, seals. The seals there. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, right. He yeah. was in the seals and he went to raise money for people who were coming out and being infected for mental health. Anyway, he had to run okay. this... Yeah, it wasn't like a runner before. It was more like a bodybuilder. Like did lots yep. of pumps, lots of weights, lots of iron. And to qualify for this other race, you had to do this race. You had to run for 24 hours. And the guy said, you have to run 100 miles to qualify for this next race. Anyway, he got to around 70 miles. He said, yeah, he ran about 70 miles and he went and he sat down. It was one of those races. You can take a race whenever mm. you wanted. Mm. Ran and sat down and he reckoned he was just like, his body was cooked. Like he had blisters. He was like, ended up like shitting himself. Like his body just shut down on him, right? Shit. And he was like, he thinking, oh, fuck. And he was like dying. But then his wife at the time was like, oh, like, you know, you got to do this, blah, blah. And he kind of switched his brain and he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. And he was running. He did he did about 10 more miles and he was like, it's not, it wasn't on pace to even finish yeah. 100 miles in 24 hours. Yeah. But then he, he clipped over a gear and then finished. He ran 101 miles within 19 hours, whatever. But his like, body was shot. Like he needed someone That's to carry I mean, him he's off. pretty much dead. Yeah. That's what I said to you about running. Yeah. You just go numb. And yeah, just- yeah. But this is what he said. <laughs> yeah. he, after that, you know, he, he now lives by a 40% rule. He goes like, yeah, the 70 mile mark, he thought he was done. Like he yeah. couldn't give any more. But then he had another 40% left in, him. in the tank. And he goes, not even that point. He reckons, you know, his wife had to carry him up the stairs, put him in the bathtub. and wow. But he wasn't dead yet. Like he yeah. goes, I mean, like he was saying, like That's the guy so he was interviewing with, he was like 99.999% away from like he was 0.001% away from, from being, dead. From being yeah. dead. But yeah. Yeah. like he wasn't yet done, yeah. you know, so he always lives his life by this 40%. Wow. Like, you know, I've got, you know, I might be feel like this now, but really I can go another 40 Yeah. I've got another forty percent left in the tank, and that's yeah. the same thing with your mind. You yeah, know? yeah. You I'm, might think oh, I'm going through all this sort of so stuff, closely. but really, I can yeah. handle. I can handle so much yeah. more. And the more that's exactly what you were saying. The more you challenge yourself, the more you find that out, and that then defeats the whole. Because the anxiety is the fear of the unknown. Like you don't know yeah. how much you can challenge yourself, or you don't know how how strong you are. Or you don't know how. So, like, as soon as you challenge yourself, you feel that reward and that growth, and then it kind of like anxiety is always going to be there. That's mm. the thing, and that's, yeah, 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 that's what it you is. Can't like, run away from it. No, but like that's I guess the biggest part is that it's always going to be there. Mm. Um, but it's just knowing how to like it's not overcoming it. It's just like living with it, mm. and growing with it, and yeah, mm. super interesting. Now, mm. if you were to have dinner with any four people ever, mm-hmm. anyone you can choose, who would you pick? Okay, I, I feel like I just th- thought of athletes straight away. Um, you can be athletes. You can be all athletes. You can I. Be you want. I Brought him up before. I just love to rack his brain, LeBron James. Yeah. He'd be my number one. Um, I'd really like to sit down with Serena, Serena Williams. I think yeah, yeah. she's just an absolute powerhouse. And obviously being a female, being not white is just, you know, I think it's just incredible, like mm-hmm. against all odds really. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I think it should be that way at all, but, um, yeah, unfortunately it is. But, yeah, Serena Williams. Um, LeBron, Serena. Ron Serena. Oh, God, let me think. Probably someone more low key, Erin Phillips. Loved yeah. her. Yeah. Um, not low key. Oh, my God. She's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. She's incredible. She's but I'm just thinking in terms Big of fish. Australia. Yeah. She actually, um, when I was in the academy, she came through as one of the coaches and I met her there. Yeah, oh, my God. I have a photo of shaking her hand again when we play. <laughs> Such a goof. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Aaron Phillips, and then who else? Matt. Me again. We've just spoken yeah. for almost two and a half hours. <laughs> have we actually? What time is it? <laughs> yeah, almost. You're ticking over. Just ticking over two and a half oh, hours. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Um. Yeah. Oh, if it wasn't yourself, I can't think. I don't know. We, we, I feel like we can go for another two and a half hours, oh, really. Five hours. So we, so we can go. So I'm happy to come to dinner. We're going to make for me. Yeah, You're going to cook me. You would cook, cook, cook me something or you take me out for dinner? I would. I'd be too scared of what everyone else thought, so I'd take yours out for dinner. Yeah, Summer Italian. I love Italian. Yeah, don't. So it's my 21st coming up and I want to go to it. Do you know a really nice Italian restaurant around here? Mm. Well, you know, you'd rather make no, it yourself. No, there's a small little pizza bar on George Street that I like. That's mm. probably the best pizza, pizza mm. I've had here. Mm. Other than that... There's another oh, another place in in Fremantle Il Sorso. Yeah, okay. Like I'll a rob Yeah, Il Sorso. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a place I went there. Italy, but yeah. we had, and one of our coaches. He lives north of the river. He had like his um, 
he lives next door to his his brother in law, yeah. and they ended up they had like a big pizza bar, and they all the coaches and some of the leadership group we do that like after end of preseason start of like the season sort of thing we do like a big lunch yeah. thing, yeah. and we like cooked up all the shrimp in like we in the wood oven pizza like the garlic prawns so we had garlic prawns, yeah. I mean all the homemade pizza and stuff, all the wine, and then and then after we all cooked our um, like dessert pizzas in yeah, the little nice. wood oven. Nice. That's be the one thing that dessert I would love to have if I like be the one thing. That I wanted to have in my own house would yeah. be a wood oven pizza. Really? Because you can just like you can do Chuck whatever you want. And so my cousins yeah. in Melbourne have that, and they cook like cinnamon scrolls in there. It's not like that complex though, is it? That no, actual? you can yeah, yeah, just brick cement brick like bricks. Yeah, cement it up as long as you've got yeah. like a marble thing on the thing, like yeah. a marble thing on the thing, like a marble base. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. a concrete base to like it's sort of like it keeps the heat. Okay. Mm. Yeah, maintains it all. It maintains yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, last thing, yeah. last question. This comes from Uncle Frank. Have you heard of the story of Uncle Frank? No. Yeah, so I didn't tell him I originally started a podcast and supposedly he's an avid podcast listener. Yeah. So I um, once he found out, he listened to like five, I think at that stage I had five out and this is all yeah. five of them over the Easter long weekend. And then he sent me like all good family mem- Italian fam- family members do, yeah. sent me a whole bunch of questions that he would like to be asked on the <laughs> <Okay>. podcast. <laughs> so like I picked one. So okay. I picked one to keep him happy. Yeah. And the question is? Yeah. If money wasn't wasn't an object and nothing was impossible, what would you do? If money wasn't an object yeah. and nothing was impossible, yeah, what would you do? So that's saying that I pretty much it's money isn't a thing, so everything's just free. I can do anything, yeah, and yeah. nothing's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I would do something to make the world equal. Yeah. Something, whether that's food, whether that's opportunity. I don't know how I would do it. So, Uncle Frank, I'm not specific. Yeah. But quality. I would do yeah. something. That's fair. Because obviously money is the reason there's world hunger, everything, and mm-hmm. there's just poverty, everything. So if money wasn't a thing, you know, and then that makes food free, I don't know. I'd do something to – I just feel like there's still mm. so much, so much change that needs to happen in the world and I feel like – I don't know. I feel like it's hard. It's easy to talk about, but like, as always, so you always watch these documentaries that are like I've, I've seen so many about even the oceans, what's going on there, and the pollution and whatever. And it always gets to the end of it, and you feel like shit after watching it. You feel you're grateful mm. you watch it, and you're like, "Fuck, I need to do something." Yeah. But they never really give you like. There's never really like a. I'm gonna do that. I can only do that to make this better. It's kind of mm. like. Yeah. So I'd I'd like to find something that would. Maybe a, a solution to make the world a better place. I don't know. I think it's getting so like better. Everything but. is so corrupt. Like it's all corrupt. Like all oh, the. hundred yeah. percent. You know, people in government are always bought off by the guys who are doing the energy, and then like, really, are they really going to put their huge, time yeah. into yeah. to like you know cut down greenhouse gases when you know they're being paid off by all these yeah. big oil companies? Yeah. You know, to keep like, yeah. their business going. And same, and then the same thing you've got. But then if you want to make everything equal, it's good because you know you've got so many countries like North Korea, China, mm. I mean even. Like we're being here are so oppressed and, you know, you can mm. free those mm-hmm. people who live in those countries. And, well, like, that's what I mean. And then, you, you know, you have places like over in Africa who don't yeah. have technology and they like, don't even have um, like sewage systems so they're living on like crap on the road. And But it's just, it's not even a, um, that's not even comparable. It's not even like there's a 5% difference between each. It's like you've got someone that's living with too much, way too much, and someone that's barely living at all. So it's like that whole, th- there's some concept around, the billionaires and millionaires and whatever, if you gave, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could end world hunger. Like, is that just, and they'd still have heaps. Like, yeah. they'd still have heaps. But it's funny to think that though, because they're driven by, they're driven by money and this sort of stuff, but they, they, they're the creators of what we use, like our iPhones and stuff. Without those people, without their brains and without their egos, mm. we don't have the luxury of having iPhones. But then and- what would the world be without iPhones? Because then if you're trying to make the world an equal place, then ideally Africa would need all technology and stuff. Mm. But what if you just wipe technology out completely? But then you don't have any of the stuff that we've been. We better do this podcast. Yeah. And smile, Uncle mate. Frank. There we go. <laughs> we, we just opened up a whole other can of worms. A new two and a half hour podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you cracked the record, you know that? Have we I? just taken over. You've ticked over two and a half. So yes. you broke Kelly, Kelly's. So we, I think Kelly held the longest two, two, two hours, hours and ten minutes. So we started the episode off on a history making introduction. Yeah, yes, the first the one. Yeah. Thank Look, you very mate, much for I, having um, me. Yeah, so do you wanna <laughs> yeah, do you wanna shout anyone out? Do you wanna thank oh, anyone? Yeah, well shout out to everyone I've brought up, I guess, in um 
in my two and a half hour speech. My goodness, yeah. my family, <laughs> my closest friends that have stuck with me, my partner Liv, been so supportive. Um, oh, yeah. Check. And yeah, congratulations to you on the bub. My Nothing, goodness, that's much. so cool. Yeah. Do you know the gender yet? Uh, I don't know the gender. Are you going to find out? No. No. Okay. We're 24 weeks today. Wow. Congratulations. We, Casey's really 24 cool. weeks. And she always says, say so, we. I'm like, no, but it's you. Yeah. You're a whole baby, you know. You're 24 weeks pregnant. Yeah. It's your creation, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah shout out to you as well, man. And I feel like, I feel like doing all these podcasts too has helped yeah. me kind of, I feel like being able to connect with a lot of different people. Yeah. Kind of made, because I was hell, hella nervous about doing this, like, 100%. Being a dad sort of thing. I yeah. feel like reflecting back and learning and learning off all the different people, I feel like it's opens your like mind. Not, not, not that it's going to be easy. I feel like more comfortable now. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it flow. So, yeah, I appreciate you coming out and, uh, you know, we try to tee this up for a while. So, yeah, no and stress. go check much. out the dope threads up on the boxes. boxes merch. I'll bring some things like that too. And so I'll yeah. be, um, yeah. I'll sort of pump them yeah. out. Yeah. And I'll, I'll make sure I let everyone know <laughs> and I'll shout it out. I'll tag you. <laughs> I'll do everything from a social media aspect to kind of reach reach your audience a bit more, mate. So I feel like, yeah, it's really, really, really important kind of message that you're you're creating or you're sending out other people. And yet again, yeah, I feel like a lot of other people kind of need to need to kind of get a, mm. get around it, understand, and yeah. be good to kind Just of have the conversation about exactly it, really. the conversation. Yeah. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you a lot, mate. I really appreciate no it. Great, so. thank you. Being there, done that, and thank everyone for.